Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the afternoon session of the uh, big guns here at Bar 8 Bandura. We've got uh, a few matches on the front tables here. Steve Gray and Scotty Peel, 6 all. Joel Younger, 4-0 uh, up on Young VJ. And uh, Pixie and Jake just about to start. As in Scotty Matthews versus Jake McCartney. I've got uh, the King, Brett Rogers, here in the commentary booth with me. 
Yeah, welcome all. Welcome all to the um, viewing of some great pool here today. We've got Joey and lining up a pretty easy block, so not one he'll miss ever. What do you think about his technique? Very, very solid, very solid job. Yeah. Has won the previous two big guns events. Yeah. Hard man to beat. Very solid. I think Stevie Gray and Scotty Peel are six all over there. Yeah, they're in a battle. Yep. Scott's definitely improved over the last uh, last six months. It's uh, one thing you'll never get playing Steve Gray is an easy match. No, never. Fights for every frame. Well, Steve's got the all-round game, there's no doubt about that, Paul. And he's, um, he just does what he has to do to win. That's it. So that's a good test for Scotty. Mm -hmm. What's the score in the Joel VJ match? 5-0. 5-0. 5-0. Mm -hmm. Oh, VJ's um, taking out some big scalps already, so mm. he's beaten Mick Delahoney and Peter Butterworth, so... for VJ. Bit surprised he's taken Reds here, Paul. Would have thought Yellow would have been the ball. Yeah, maybe he didn't realise it was open table. Mm, maybe. Okay, we've got a real treat here. And Scotty Matthews and Jake McCartan. Yeah. Two okay. great players. Uh, what are you feeling awesome. on this match? Well, I've, uh, I've played with Scotty for many years, and I know how good he is, and obviously Jake's the informed player. And his form's been brilliant, so... Should be a cracker of a match, I think. It definitely is a cracker of a match. Hard to pick. <coughs> nice split there. Got an open table. Yeah, I'm looking at Reg. Yeah, I'd say I think we'll definitely see Scotty take Reg here. He knocks this ball up the top. Yeah, it's nice on that. The, uh... Well, the ball's all linked up here. If he gets the ball on the rail, gets rid of that. It's on this one. Once he pots the the, the red next to the yellow, above the black, that's a natural position on the, on the half dead ball. Yeah, that that red next to the yellow, I think, is the key ball. You get it, get rid of it that. Is, yeah, I think you'll see Scott take it. Pot After this ball, yeah, or no, take the uh, take, push take on the one in the corner now, then take the other one in the corner, then get rid of it. Yep. Land somewhere over near the yellow on the side rail, sort yeah, of. Yeah, he has to get, obviously, the, I'd say the, the second last ready will take it, will be the one on the rail. Yeah. Then the transition, for the, the ball sitting next to that, to the black. And so that's why you play. Unless he lets you get, you may get on the one on the rail now. No, he's played it the, that way, the way I initially said. Might. Got to be a bit careful here. Needs to keep the right angle to get on the one on the rail next. Yeah, if you do after flick the one under the black. If you do flick the red as you screw back, yeah, you could end yeah. up with a dodgy angle. And he can't screw back into the yellow because he will leave himself with no angle to get on the other two. He might he might hold off the yellow on the I cushion. I think he just run through this softly off the rail, Paul. Unless he comes back across the table now, but I, I don't think that's the shot. Well, that's what he's played. Well, the red does go in the middle pocket as well, so. Goes both ways, yeah. yeah. 
soft screw here. Looks Anything but straight on this red's fine. Looks like he's slightly on the wrong side of this outside. Yeah, it's right? a little bit tricky this shot, but it's got his such good cures and such great touch, so he should be able to yeah. just get a slight screw on this. He's playing this one first. He's obviously screwing ab above the black. Oh no, he had that in. A bit deceptive, the camera, camera angle. Needs, uh, needs left hand side on this ball. Oh, uh, he must get. I was thinking right hand side, come near the yellow. No, well, you've been stunned between the yeah the, the black and the yellow. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you'll find Scotty will roll, roll this in with left hand side actually. Off. And play it in the middle. And play the red in the middle. It's yeah. just a matter of whether he can hold. I think he can. Well, does 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 require a bit of side, but quite a bit of side actually. Yeah. And this shot has to be played very slowly as well. That's so what I mean. Whether you can hold it. Yeah. I think you might be right, Paul. I think he will play this between the black and the black and the yellow. Yeah, he is. Oh no, no, he's playing at the. the he's playing high on yeah, the he's ball. He's playing in, playing the red in the middle. Actually, that was a little bit different than what angle once again than what we could, what we thought. He's uh, not, not left the white ball too easy for Jake to start. I think Jake can get the cue to this one over the pocket, so. It's not, not as bad as it actually looks because the black is tricky to get to. It's probably not the shot you want first shot for the match, though. No. Bridging over. Yeah. I think Jake's looking at a snooker here. I don't think he can play a snooker either. I think he has to play the ball. Oh, hang on, he can flick off that side, yeah. There's no get... guarantees of getting a snooker here. Yeah, it's not easy. He's played it well. He's played it very well. Left him Scotty can put the red Jackie. on the red though. Yeah. And hold on the yellow. I thought, uh, I thought Jake would pot the ball over the hole there. thing about playing in these shots is you have to keep them a thickish contact on, on on the cannon otherwise the red can get killed to the side rail I think that's uh, one one factor about Jake probably that uh, he's also got that game to fall back on oh definitely yeah yeah he's a very smart player Scotty's play that's very nicely yeah very nice I think we've seen put the black in the same pocket here. I Once again, this shot can go wrong. You can lean on the yellow that's above the black. Just like that. That's, um, he's all right, though. He can get his cue to that. Obviously, the pot becomes a lot trickier if he's sitting right. He's got a bridge right, right over the yellow, but no, Scott's fine here. Nice tall bloke. Yeah, this is 1-0. He's used to uh, playing down on the ball, Brett, so... Yeah, no, he's very good at these shots. Always has been. Arrows the ball nicely. Yeah, no, great cue action. How about them ears, though? <laughs> yeah, the ears. Yeah, I thought, I thought, actually, I thought... Maybe, probably a wrong shot selection from Jake there. I thought he had to pop the ball over the hole yeah. and work his way back into the frame from there because it was it had to be pinpoint that snooker. Mm. Yeah. We got an update over there, Steve Gray 7 6 up on uh, Scotty Peel 7 6. Yep, that's Joel, good from Scotty. Joel Younger 6 0 up. Yeah, well, that's um. Nice break from uh, Pixie there. Yeah, the Pixie, as we call him at times. Reds, definitely Reds here. Yeah, definitely Reds? Definitely Reds because the transition of those two yellows is very tricky. Even unless you, unless you can create something now. I don't. If he can pot the pot the yellow on the rail and he's got the gap between the 
the yellow and the black to pot the other yellow, then you'll take yellows if the other if the yellow next in, in the pack of those two reds is on, which it doesn't look to me that it is on. He was just having a look at the yellow and I think you'll take reds here, Paul, because I think all the reds are actually on. Or if this red next to the on top of the yellow goes into the top right hand pocket, well, I'm telling then you, it's an easy it's an easy dislodge on the other one just to nudge it. He's, he's looking at yellows. He's looking at yellows. He looked. He we went, can pot this and screw back, then screw into the bunch. He came around before and had a look at playing this uh, yellow into the corner yeah, and so nudging into the red. Yeah, well, I'm not, I don't think that's on, Paul. Is that on? Yeah, he looked at it before. Okay. So he's looking at it again. Okay. So if he pots that yellow and nudges the red, it pushes the other yellow yeah, out. Yeah, it does too. Yeah. Right. Yes. He probably, I don't know what kind of angle he's got to get on it, yellow. Yeah, I don't think he'd be playing it straight away. I think he'd be following through for the for the two yellows in Bork, for playing the one on the left first, then coming down the table for, the, for that shot you just mentioned, pull off the other yellow in Bork, the one nearest to the hole. He's played that, you know. Young VJ's just got his first frame on the board against uh, Joel. There you go. 6 one. 6 one. That's not a good shot from Scott. That's left him in no man's bit land, straight, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, a bit straight. And Maybe you can run through this off two cushions and get back on the, the, the yellow the yellow and ball in the same pocket. And that's what he's playing. Steve Gray, 8-6. Eight, 8-6 six. Eight, six to Steve Gray. And Scott, he's missed. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't um, didn't take enough care on the shot before, did he, Paul? No. Needed, needed, need, definitely needed to get the right angle there. Yeah, he was a bit straight. I think uh, Jake's definitely. Um, if the red goes into the top right corner next to the yellow, then Jake, Jake's a pretty good thing of going out here. Even even if it doesn't, he can uh, just nudge it open now. Sorry. Yeah. I don't think he'd be play that now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't go. Definitely pop this. Take the take the red and walk. Hmm. I think he wanted to come the other side of the yellow. Yeah, didn't? I think he did. Yeah. It does have a shot in the, the red into the middle. It's They're very, very tricky shot though. On these tables, they are quite tricky. There. Yeah. Very uh, narrow cut towards the middle. If you're on the angle, there, hard to pot in the middle. He doesn't, have a, he doesn't have a lot of choice though here. It looks like he's playing a double here actually. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Safety. He's played it well. That's, that's a good shot. Shot to nothing. Yeah, shot to nothing. <laughs> I think Scott has to double this yellow back down over this top right hand pocket here. That'd be a good shot. Get it nice and neat right over the yeah. pocket. Unless he just bounces into the, that yellow and bounces it up a bit and leaves the white, leaves, leaves him off the one in Bork. Yeah, he could keep the white behind the red. It'd be a nice weight shot. Mm. Yeah, you can also roll up just off it on the left-hand side of the yellow and just put the white behind the red. Just a containing safety, but I think he's playing the double back. Yeah, yeah that's the shot for me, but heavy. you have to get that right, obviously. A bit heavy, a bit crooked. Reds are a little this bit is, uglier than yeah, they Yeah, this is too tight to, to run through it and get into the bunch of reds. Yeah. Knock them all on, but... I think we'll see... Uh, I think we'll see Jake run this up down the bottom here. Oh, he's playing the pot, looks like. Yeah, no, just run it down the bottom. That's the right shot. That's swung out. Did you see that? Uh, as, yeah, it did. As it come like down. moved a bit. Yeah, it swung off. It's got a lot of work to do here now. Reds are definitely favourite now. Scotty could double this back inside the red. Could also come, pot the yellow in board and come off the top rail, the side rail, and get into that dead yellow, but you're still trusting them a lot of luck. Ooh, yeah. That's all the shot, so... What about... Uh... No, he can't, he can't I think get the only shot's a double, Paul. But...
Maybe run this down, the one on the rail. Yeah. Maybe pop this, then run it down, but there's not... Jake not can, get, the Jake angle, can no. get to the ridge. He's tried to get right over. Expect Jake to get these once he gets a cannon into those ridge, but then once again you need to control that shot to, to make sure you've got an easy starter once you do go into that sort of shot. He's over hit this. Yep. Uh, that's uh... <coughs> Turned into an ugly frame now. And Jake could run off the, the top top red and put the wide in ball, but in doing that he's leaves has got the easy option of a snooker behind the yellow on the ball rail. On the side rail in Bork. So I think we'll find Jake will just clip off this red here and just leave the white Up tight on the top yellow. rail. Tight on the top rail. I think that's the shot. I leave Scott no shot. He can't Scott can't go out from there unless he yeah. produces something astronomical, which Jake's actually moving the black here. I don't think that was the right shot, Paul. He it's, tried to put the... Yeah. Well, if Scotty knocks his ball along the rail... Yeah. If he comes up with two big shots here and then gets the right, correct position shot on the bottom yellow of the bottom of the pack, he can actually dismount the other yellow and go again. And I think he has to go for it. I think he has to play the, the ball and ball. Mm. The other one on the rail, if he can get an angle to stun across on the other one... He's right beyond the eight ball here, so he's got to take the ball no, by the uh, horns. That's what I'll be playing, Paul. I don't know about yourself, but... I was just looking at whether the uh, yellow-red, he can plant that red over near the uh, side, side rail. Push, but it doesn't, it goes it towards... It looks the, like it's going to the woods of jaw, so... It does. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's played the, played the jackie. He's tried to leave uh, Jake with no pot, but I think he's left an angle here. You can just see that outside one. Yeah, well. Play the combination. Even if Jake's got the, Jake's got the plant here, he's going to yeah. create all the balls if it's an easy plant. <coughs> but once again, in saying that, it's a shot you must get if you're going to play it. Well, yes and no, because I think if it doesn't drop, he's got, he'll have the black contained. Yeah, he's playing the first shot you said initially, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good shot. Yeah. Now Scott could put, play the yellow onto the red and push it up in the ball. Give it by himself some time here. That's, that's the shot I'll be playing. Get the other red up there. Yeah, yeah. get the red up in the ball. It's definitely the shot I'll be playing because... Yeah, you gotta got to give yourself another shot here, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do, yeah. Anything else? Uh, you're really in trouble. We <laughs> fall. We've got Lee sweeping behind us, and he's wondering what I'm doing on the mic. I'm not going to question his judgment. You go, you're not going <laughs> to uh, give us any karaoke, are you, Brick? Oh, uh, no, not today, Paul. <laughs> but no doubt it'll happen sometime in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a shot Scotty's playing. He has to try and kill this red. He needs to get this close to a rail, because Jake's good enough to absolutely get on that red if he doesn't. That's a great shot. That's a good shot. He if he left... Jake a gap there, room to move to get up there into ball. Yeah. Then Jake can work his way onto the ball and obviously yeah. pot out. Now Jake has to do something with that red. That's right. At the end of this visit, you cannot leave that red up there because then Scotty can do all sorts of damage. It's an interesting shot here, Paul. I think I'd be playing this 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 ball here on the on the right hand side of the table, but screwing off it with right hand side so you get the arc, playing it off the top rail and dismanting the red back this way. Not towards the yellow, because you can knock the yellow in and not get it out. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? No, I don't. <laughs> well, screw off yep. the right, with right-hand side. The side will kick it off the top row and can't check back into the red. Jay's got that shot in his river charge. Whereas if he actually knocks it the other way, he could actually still kill it. It is a big shot, but the black's covered. He, can take, he could take the risk on that sort of shot. So you're saying open up those two yellows and the red now? No. Off this shot? Play, if he actually screws past the red that's next to the yellow. Uh, okay, okay. With, yeah. the, with the arc, with the right hand side, the, 
punched Neo, your head back Neo, in Neo the table. I'm with you. Now I'm with yeah. you. And he's just made a retaining shot here. I, I don't think that's a good shot. I don't think it is either. Scotty I, I, can I, take control Scotty, of this black Scotty pocket. Scotty can take control of the pocket. And then he's got the game uh, well in control. Yeah, again. well, that's right. Don't, don't. He has to get this over the hole, though. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Oh, he's knocked the red on. It's not bad. No, it's not, it's not good, Paul, because he's actually knocked the red on underneath think, the yellow. You think there's a gap? Yeah. Jake can... I think we'll find Jake will have two shots on that red in ball to... Um, there is a gap. I just had a yeah, look. To get back on the table. Pots the red in the middle. Or oh, plays a Jackie. He's played yeah. that well. He has played that a treat. Yeah. I wonder if Jake will bring this out now, Paul. I, don't, I can't see him bringing it out nah, yet. Nah, nah. Two the middle. visits, Brett. Yeah, pop the one in the middle. Double, double the red back down the table. Oh. Oh, he's got to be close to that. That's 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 not good. No, how he did can he... can still play it off the right hand, right hand side of the red and bring it down the table, but he has to actually get on the red. He might be able to come off the cush with side. I think he'd be just bouncing the red in the middle of the table and then potting the red in the middle. Yeah. He could go off the left hand side, so that's fine. This pretty base gear for Jake now. Pots the red in the middle, comes across to the side rail, drops the red in underneath the black. One on. He's. He can still get under it. Gotta be careful you don't kiss the black when yeah, you that's try. Right, yeah. I think you'll find Jake will screw off this a little bit more, plays slightly longer black. There's no, there's no chance of missing the black so. Yeah, you just don't want to kiss the edge of no, the black. No, you can just sort of soft screw off it, but... Like that. Yeah. Yep. He's played it well. That's the percentage of playing that you leave. That's a, like, like Paul said, that shot can go wrong if you actually try to dolly it, soft yeah, screw it, yeah, and yeah. just dolly it. You can actually flick the black. Jake's made sure that that couldn't happen. Eight one to Joel. Joel Young is eight one up. 8-1 to Joel. Steve Gray, 9-6 up. 9-6 up on Scotty Peel. Some great matchups this morning. And it's only going to get yeah, better. Be, uh, all the big players are starting to meet yeah. now in the fourth round or whatever it is. Last 16, I think, on the winner's side, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah these are last 16 matches. Dry break there. Dry break. Don't mind the reds. The reds look absolutely spectacular. And so do the yellows. Yeah, they're not bad. Either ball you could play here. Yeah. Actually, I think the yellows are the ball, Paul, to be honest. You like the yellows better? Yeah, I think the yellows ball. Potting, potting that yellow in the middle, the dead. that's the only ball that's half dead on the, next to, on the rail. Hmm. Scott's not going to miss that if he get pots, pots the ball in the middle. He's fat on that. Yeah, Scott, he's, he's taking reds. It makes the black easier if you take reds. It does doesn't. make the black easier, that's true. I expect Scotty to be out here. He's just uh, demonstrated his uh, yeah. Q power there yeah. with a nice screw back. Run a bit of check through. side, no, yeah. a bit of check side here, Paul. Just roll it in. No, it's, that's, that's a little straight, but he's fine. Yeah. The only problem, ball. And it's not a problem. It is actually the one that's out in the open next to the yellow. It looks like it may not, it they're may all, not be a clear pot, but it must be. Otherwise, Scott would have thought about this a bit more. They're all quite close together. One positional shot here, and he's out. That's perfect. He's oh. on that ball now. Yeah, he's, this is this is two one. This is like being around the black on this the super table. He stuns in between the two reds. Choice of three reds. Yeah, this can't go wrong. Look at that. Lovely rhythm, Scotty, with his action. Oh, he's st deliberately stunned no, into that. That's fine anyway. Yeah. Pots this, he just didn't. knocks the red up, he yellow up the table. It's on the one next to the rail, stuns across. Pots the pots the red in the middle. Oh, he Game wanted over. to push that a bit further, I think. He so. should have put. Yeah, you're right. He's now still fine though. Now he's a bit hampered. He, yeah, well, these shots are missable now. It's, if he plays that just a touch firmer yeah. and pushes the yellow another. Yeah, it's ABC, but at the moment this is actually missable because it's a little straight and he has to actually force it. Yeah. He's stunning out. He's played it well. 
He does Cut short. Cues the ball well, doesn't he? Yeah, I think we have to see Scott roll into the yellow yellow here. Yeah, this There's is no just... sense in trying to get better on the black. Just roll it in and play a slightly harder black. Yeah. Half full black. The easiest pot you can make. That's perfect. Yeah. This is 2-1. Joel lines up an easy yellow there to get on the black, so looks like being 7-1 there. Uh, that'd be 9-1, Brett. 9-1. 9-1. Well, there you go. Yeah. Joel Younger, he just keeps doing it, doesn't he? 9-1. Well, like I say, VJ's had some very good wins against two very good players so far in this tournament, so... It's, uh... Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of close matches in this tournament, but I know uh, there's been a few run-outs too, uh, Rusty... Had a 11 yeah, Rusty's nil. had two 11 nils, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Rusty's a um, sensational player. You see Rusty do things that a lot of players don't do and very entertain entertaining player to watch. He uh, reminds me a little bit of yourself, Brett. He, uh, Thanks, Paul. <laughs> he sees, sees the game uh, in a different light to most. <laughs> I think... Uh, what do you say? The way I see it. <laughs> yeah. If I bring a book here, that's what it'll be called. <laughs> uh, Scott's, uh, what's he potted? A, a red off the break. No, a yellow. He's got a yellow. Yellow's the ball here, Paul. But well, it, that one near the red in the middle. Even the reds. The reds, are they're all good. But he must make a ball here. I think, uh, once again, I like taking yellows because of it. They're all around the black, you know yeah, what I mean? That's true, yeah. But he, he hasn't got a starter on yellows by the looks of things. Yeah. The reds are pretty good, though. The problem with playing the, the jackie off the yellow here is you kill the red. You push the other red down to the side rail here. Unless you get it to the rail, mm. it's dead. So that's what Scotty will be thinking about here. He looks like he's playing the red off the yellow. That, that's what I'm talking about. He can yeah. actually kill that red that's underneath the yellow. That's, yeah. There it is, it's sort of half dead there. It's not quite on, you're right. No, well, it's, that's the problem with that sort of shot. Will he, will he come into this off this corner red with a little bit of right-hand side? I'll tell you, I'll be playing this, Paul. I'll be going, potting the red into the top right-hand pocket, coming off two rails and getting that red out of there. Two rails, I was looking at. Yeah, you're right. Two rails, under, underneath the two yellows, just make a nice little contact with the red and, and you go game. Yeah. The only, the only problem then is you need a transition ball from the last red to the black. That's what Scotty's playing. He's definitely playing that shot. There it is. That is. That is. And he's knocked the blacker. That's perfect. Superfluous. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. That's that's the best result possible. Now. Middle right hand, middle red. I think you have to get rid of this red that he's that's closest to the white at the moment. That is the problem ball here. Even though it looks like it's out in the open, yeah. you have to get on that ball correctly. So Scott will, Scott will be looking to get on as quickly as possible. If this was me, I'd be playing the, the red into the right corner pocket, leaving an angle on, on the red in the left corner pocket. The, the long red? Down, no, the one in the left corner pocket. Bounce down in between the yellows, pot that, pot the long red, in, pot, pot that one in the middle, pot the long red into the top kick, one in the middle, you're on the black. That's what Scotty's going to play, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what he'll play. <coughs> Click across. This, this is the tricky shot. He needs yeah, to get on this red down. a little bit of left-hand side. I think he can actually stun down off of the pool. Stun? Yeah. Okay. Either way, off the, using the rail, side rail, or just stunning down. Just give yourself a clear shot at the red. That's all that's required here. Yeah, you're right. That's the way he played. He's over hit that a touch. Yeah. Still... Yeah, back a couple of inches would yeah. have been perfect. Now I think we'll have to find Scott play stun behind the yellow. Oh no, he looks like he's running through, running through it. He looks like he's going to chip the chip the red. That could have gone wrong. That's oh. I, th I think I would have been playing that the other way. I think I would have been playing to the other side of the red there, Paul. Yep. He's fine. Just knock this in. Screw down the table just a touch. Nice little angle to, to just roll onto the black. This should be 3-1. Yeah, it's a good shot. 
over to the touch. See, this, this is the problem with the transition balls. Yeah, he's probably going in and out of balk. In and out of balk, stun the white high. Hit it high with hit stun. Hit it high, hit it high with stun, Paul. Just yes, yep. That's what he's doing. Now, just a nice little strike through the ball. That's a good shot. Control See, that, see how yeah. the white player stunning it high. You create, you push the white further towards the left-hand side of the top rail. With the right-hand side, it'll check it back so you've got Mate, the prime position. I'm telling you now, the listeners out there are in for a treat with you commentating. <laughs> Not many can explain the shots the way you do. Well, there it is, three eyes. Good out by Scott. There you go. Three one. Yeah, three one to Scott. Steve Gray and Scott Peel. Who won the last air pool? Nine seven to Steve Gray. Nine seven. Scotty won it. And Scotty looks. Oh, the prime set prime here. This this should be nine eight. And VJ's got another frame. Nine two. Okay. Sorry, two nine. What's Scotty done here? Oh, well, he's missed the pot. I don't think he's left shot Steve's shot at the red though. And Jake McCartney breaking. What's Steve doing? He's come up dry again. Oh, this is a major opportunity for Scott here. Major. Hang on, Steve's on yellow. Oh, Steve's on yellow. Oh, sorry. Okay. Whoa, these... What have we got here? This is a dry break. And a these fine balls are spread wide. They are. If these two reds on the left-hand corner pocket down here are on... I'd say they reds are. Reds are pretty easy, yeah. They, they both do actually look on. And I think you start with the one in ball, Paul. You just, put, you just float it in, just come into the middle of the table and work your way down. Now, the, the only thing that can really... He's taking yellows. Pots this ball. This, this is 4-1 if he pots this ball. He's going to stun into the other yellow. Nice and softly. That's beautiful. Yeah. This yeah. is 4-1, Paul. Now you... Uh, this ball, then the middle ball... Here, you've got to, the only thing you've got to look at here is retaining, obviously, transition from the last yellow to the black here. That's the only thing that can go wrong for mine here. He's going to stun me, just get up on play on both. He's actually trying to get on the ball on the rail here. And it's, that's all right. He's under hit it, but that's fine. He can use his uh, I, I think that's what he played for. That's, I think you're probably right, that's actually. The way Roll this in the middle. Put the other one on the top kick. Other yellow in the middle. So red, yellow on the side row, stun down to the top row, roll, roll the last yellow in, black in the middle. Yeah. That's what Scott's looking at here. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, this, this is pretty straightforward. The player is calibre, does not miss these sort no. of outs. This is it. The thing about Scotty is he's got exceptional cue ball control. So you can't be giving Scott Matthews chances like this and expect to win. Yeah, well, all Jake's done is dry break. Good Jay, uh, that's what I'm saying. It's just that's the that's the luck of the game, isn't it? Isn't it? You can't give top line players these opportunities. What do you reckon on Scotty's chances for the tournament? He uh, hasn't been seen a lot lately in the Sc tournament. Scott hasn't. Oh, that's a bit short, Paul. Nah, that's all right, Brett. Oh, are you sure? Yeah. Looks a bit straight, mate. Looks a bit straight yeah, for I think, I think he can stun across. He has to stun across. Stun across. It's essential that he gets on this yellow into the same pocket. He's going to hit straight through the middle of the ball here, Brett. Bang. Yeah, your rifle as well. There you go, Paul. This has become a little tricky. Which, How do you play this, Paul? Well, you can come round the red and play it in the middle. Or... Yeah, I'd probably just drift... Drifted in and just pass the red? Yeah. Unless he plays it with check side, but that's risky. What about running through it just a touch and canning it into the red? I don't think you can sneak yourself unless you really butcher this. Yeah. I think that's the more... Don't try to just get think, past the red. I think cannon into the red here, Paul. As long as you... Uh, yeah, you don't land on the red. Well, a player of his calibre should definitely not lean on the red here. Yeah. Makes the pot a lot easier than cutting it back. To me, the safe way is just get out in the, the open. Red. Yeah, just pass the red. Even if you come down the rail a bit. Uh, yeah, I think he can get in the gap anyway. He's got to judge the pace here. It's all about the, the pace here. He's played the cannon. He's actually, you're right. Yeah, I don't think he's on this. 
he might be long on it long he's having a look I'm a bit surprised Scott actually played that shot at that pace you, you need to give that shot just a, just a bit these uh, they come off the rails a little bit slow on these yeah but I mean these blokes have been playing on these tables for two days now they should know this pool yeah true so He's, he's on it up the top. He's got a long black. Great shot. Well, you were right there, yeah. Brett. You said the transition from the last yellow That's, to the black. Yeah, that was, that was the key shot there. That's a solid black. Chapter 3 in your book, isn't it? Yeah. That's 4-1. Uh, Scotty Peel, 9-8 now. 9-8. Well, That's... Steve Gray's 9-8 up, sorry, but... Scotty, That's a great so effort from Scotty to take to have nine eight, eight with Steve. He's, we all know what Steve's done in the game and how solid he is at all aspects of the game. Rock solid. But like I said in the last six months, Scotty Peel is really starting to come on as a player. He's we got uh, Alex and Kurt over in the corner there. I'm not sure. Oh, what right the score over is. in the dungeon over there. Yeah. Scotty's yeah. uh, dumped the wide here and... Um, so return a favour. Yeah. Now it's Jake's turn That's to... That's a very uh, solid set on reds here. Do you think... Uh, yeah, reds aren't bad. I think uh, if Jake pots one ball here and gets prime position, um, this game is probably over, Paul. It's too yeah. good a player. Very good control, Jake, too. Very imaginative player. Great imagination. Well, you got to have imagination to walk around with hair like that, don't you? <laughs> I've seen, um, seen him with a lot more hair than that. Yeah. That's a good shot. I think he stuns into the middle of the table. I think he gets rid of the, the, the red next to the yellow in the yeah, middle of the table one. after that one. Plays the Jackie now. Well, he's under, no, he's played for the Jackie. I thought he actually under hit that, but he's actually played for the plant. You're right, Paul. He'll be all right here yeah, too because he'll run between the two he'll yellows. Run between the two yellows. Once he gets rid of this ball down here, the other ball's still over the hole. The other red's still over the hole after the jackie. It's pretty simple for a player with with very good control. Oh, he sort of he hasn't dropped it. Yeah, Jake didn't take as much care of that as he was required. Yeah, Scotty's got to get in that corner behind yeah, those well, yellows. Yeah, if he does, I mean, he's good enough to get those, Scott. There's no doubt about it. His cue ball control is up there. Once he gets in behind those yellows... Once he gets in behind those yellows, he's, um, he's a good thing. Could clip the one in the in the middle now and come between the black and the yellow and try to get on the on the far yellow. It doesn't matter if he gets on the on the one in the middle of the table. He can stun. This. What, what about uh, coming between the two yellows now and that's, then? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Even if he's short on this, he's on the other one. He is short on it, but that's you see Scott right. get underneath yeah. this one now. Yeah. He just. Uh... Now Scott will purposely play for a bit of angle here on this yellow because. Yeah. I think he'll play a sort of. Uh, It'll be a soft screw with left, with, yeah. with with left hand side, and I think you'll find that he'll play this off, maybe probably off two rails. Got to hit it fairly deep and yeah, sort of very, float it. Yeah, fairly deep and sort of float it. Yeah. Plenty of left hand side, just caress the ball in. Oh no, he's, and he's played that bad. It. He's played that bad, Scotty. He's That's a bad it. shot from Scotty. He might be. I don't often see him miss 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 hit shots. Like that, he might be able to play this off the yellow near the red, into the middle. Yeah, well, and hold I to mean, be on this yellow still. I mean, that was a bit careless from Scotty there, um, because that was a key shot. That was the key shot of this frame for mine. Mm. I can see him playing this off the yellow. I think he has to put this back inside that now, Paul. And then, and but it doesn't look like he's got a ball to actually connect to cannon into to hold the white. But it looks like the ball's the white's actually going into Bork if he plays that shot. He's taking the long yellow. Now he needs a couple of good shots here. Two good shots in a row here to retain position. He's got the ball. That's that's a great shot. Yeah. He's got no angle though. He hasn't got the angle he wanted. He wanted to get that out a bit further in the middle of the table and screw down for that dead yellow. I'm actually right behind this shot, Brett. And Has I, re got that angle? I reckon he can just get there. It's a okay. tight pot. Okay. Jump over here and have a look over his shoulder. It's a tight pot. Well, yeah, he's got to actually stun this down. Yeah. 
He's got to hit it pretty firm to get there. That's he the does, problem. He does. He can pinch the pocket, though. You're right here, Paul. He actually can get on this yellow. How you play this shot, you actually do have to hit this above centre and stun it down. Hit it firm, and the and the weight of the white onto the object will transform down to the bottom like that. So you notice how he hit the white high? Hit sort of, yeah. High. And he just but used the force. Hit it high with stun. With stun. That's it. A lot of people will actually play that shot low, and you can't get the white down the table. Yeah. He pots as he rolls through, puts the one in the middle. Then he's got to play the young, long yellow up to the top left-hand pocket. Stun off one rail on the black and the other. In the same middle, he's going to put the second yellow here. Yeah, this is a little bit tricky. Yeah. It's not this a... Is, look, th this, this requires a all, supreme control. Yeah, all from that one little clip on the yellow. That's right. Well, this is the problem. Could have been... That was the key shot. Scotty rolls us in, has to play another very good shot up to the top left hand pocket. Well, he, Must, uh, it leaves the white exactly where it is now, actually screws back just a touch, make the pot easier, you can I think stun off the, white, the, yellow, the far yellow easier to get on the black. He looked like he was actually looking to run through a couple of inches and then sort of come between the red and the pocket, sort of stun. Mm. I don't know. So the problem with actually screwing back a touch off this shot, that makes the pot a lot harder. Yeah. yeah, he's rolling through. Yeah. No, yep. Just a little... Well, he pots the ball now, he guarantees himself a shot at the other ball. There it is. That's. But this is a slightly slightly harder angle to pot the ball and control the wide on it. Yeah, he's really got a stun <coughs> into the side. Side rail. Just near touch the left knuckle. Hand side. Yeah. Touch the left-hand side. They actually come back past the knuckle a bit, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. The problem here, does the black go back in the middle too? It does go in the other middle. Okay. I mean, you could even play a bigger shot and come off three rails. Side rail, top rail, other side rail, black back in the, yeah, in the top yeah, left-hand yeah. pocket. This requires good queuing. No. Yeah, too many big shots in a row. Well, like you said, Paul, it all come from that nudge on the yellow on the top row. Yeah. Rusty Wheeler and Jamie Stevens are about to start. Yeah, that'll be interesting. It'll be the... Uh, yeah. Quite the a magician little. against the... I was thinking the tortoise and the hare, but... <laughs> yeah, against the... Well, you're probably right there. Against the solid. <laughs> Jamie's commonly known as the solid. If, uh, if Jamie gets him in a locker hold... <laughs> Anything can happen. He got me in a lock hole last night. Yeah? Yeah. This is 4-2. Joel's won there, obviously. Yeah, Joel's putting the cue back in the case. He's done the damage. Steve, 10-8, is it? Or... Yes, Steve's 10-8 up. 10-8. Jake on a uh, straightforward ABC yeah. black, straight to the middle. Don't see him miss these. No, you... Oh, oh my God. Commentator's yeah. curse. A bit careless from Jake then. Very careless. Wow. I'll tell you what, that, that could be a major turning point in this match. Yeah, that Five, was... 5-1 to 4-2 is... Uh, Unbelievable. Pretty, yes. Takes one good snooker from Scotty here and... And he's got it. He's pushed the yellow a little bit tight to the cushion. Yeah, that's right, yeah. If uh, Jake but gets out of this, Scotty's... If he gets out of it, yeah, that's right. But at the end of the day, Scott had to get the snooker there, Paul. Yeah, yeah, the snooker so, was the main thing. He, he yeah. made, he, by pushing the yellow closer to the cushion, he made a bigger area for the snooker, yeah, so... Yeah, that's right. If Jake just comes up and manages just to nudge the black, then Scott's faced with a big shot down the road. A very big shot. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Jake even get a snooker back here. He's not bad with his weight. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it looks like he's just playing to hit it, I think. Well, it's falling in Scott's oh, advantage. Oh, wow. Scott can just nudge this up over the All hole. All he does is put this over the hole. Jake's going to try and double the black. You want to cover the hole here because you don't want Jake putting the black inside the yellow. That's exactly right. That's if a you perfect leave it, shot. Leave yeah, a big you leave pocket. the gap. 
then the Blacks becomes a much easier shot. Yeah, so I don't know Jake this, will be playing the W. The, we, he won't be thinking. The uh, this will be interesting to see because a few players have been saying the cushions play a little funny here. Yeah. See whether it slides wide or what happens. No. I'd well, say so that's five one. Well. Oh, this is one of me trick shots, Brett. One of Paul Pye's <laughs> trick shots. I can see a five Top rail. Spin. <laughs> no, you just trickle the yellow in, then you play the black on five rails. Bang. I've seen Paul um, smashed it in many times with top left hand side and going off in the other corner pocket. Yeah. <laughs> he loves those kind of shots. Right. Well, there you go. That's five one. Five it should definitely been four two. That's just unbelievable from Jake to miss that play. I'll tell you what, Jamie and Rusty just starting to fire up on the other table. Jamie and Rusty. Here we go, this be a good matchup. They've done the toss, I think Jamie's won the toss. He's Jamie's doing the rack. He's I like this Dan. Very professional. I like it. Mate, how good is this cue ball TV? Seriously. It's just sensational. I, I, I think it, you don't even see this quality on the professional no, no. streams and feeds. Yeah, big thanks to Dan. I mean, the reason why we're viewing this and you, people can view this at home is because of Dan Lynch. He's just done a sensational thing for the game. He's, he's incredible. So. Yeah. So if you can help him, help him yeah, kick absolutely. on. Absolutely, I for one, a massive fan. I mean, it's just huge. I was sitting home the other night watching the money match and I thought, how hey, good's this? And I thought, yeah. I can sit in my land room and watch Paul. Yeah. And, he, and he goes all over the country, Danny covers everything. Snooker, whatever, nine ball, everything. He's going everywhere. That's it. From the comfort of your own land room. Yeah. Sit there in the nude. Yeah, you, you can, can do what you like, Paul. Watch the pool. <laughs> Jamie. Tricky out, but certainly gettable. Yeah, that yellow. That yellow goes between, even if it doesn't, he has to get... He, he might, might be able to nick this yellow in the middle inside those two and open the other one up. The Steve Gray and Scotty peels over, so Steve's obviously won that game. Yeah, he's grinning. Yep. What's Jamie looking at here? He's looking at nicking this yellow in and opening up the bad one. That's the shot, is it? Is that a clear shot or is that he playing is a That is a clear shot. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a clear shot, Paul. Well, it must have I been. I think the it, way went, he it went. It must have, yeah. Yeah, it went. The way he's played that, it must have been on. Oh, Rusty. Okay. Anyone out there running a book? Yeah. What's, what's the odds on Rusty clearing up from here? Well, in my honest opinion, he's about six to four. <laughs> a lot of blokes would be about five to one, but Rusty Wheeler is definitely. Well, I was going to say a lot of blokes situation. would be about five hundred to yeah. one. Eh? Rusty Wheeler is definitely six. To, the balls look like they're dead, but he's such a good shot maker that. Not quite sure what he's planning, but. I think he. Um... Well, we could see Rusty just pot the ball over the hole and just play the, the Jackie without potting it and covering the black. First frame, balls are a bit tricky. You don't want to, you don't want to get that Jamie back to the table with an easy starter and an easy out. So I'm not sure what he's looking at here. He's cross double. No, wouldn't be the cross double. Long double. Long double. There you go. I oh, think that's a very strange shot from Rusty. Very strange. Very hey. strange. Yeah, strange different. shot, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah, he wasn't. Really he doesn't off. get that, he's leaving Jamie with an out. This I is think, in a rave from Jamie. I think that's the way Rusty plays too, though. He, yeah, very strange shot selection, though, first. Yeah, he, d he doesn't uh, particularly mind taking on a shot where he knows he has to get it, you know what I mean? But he wasn't really on much after that, so... No, well... This is in a rover from Jamie. He's covered the hole. He's got the stranglehold. Oh, oh it's fallen in. dropped in. It's fallen in. Well, that's all right. He can go a game now. Yeah. I think we'll find Jamie 
stunning to the side rail. He might even... Scotty's 5-1 up. Scotty's 5-1 up, yep. Here we go. Jake with the big hammer break. Bang. And you've you just got a ball, you got a yellow? No. No. And no starter. You just heard him shout out too. Give me a oh, ball. No shot, no shot. These tables are hard to get a ball on. The Riley. Yeah, well. You gotta cop the good with the bear, mate. Some days yeah. it's sunshine, sometimes it's rain. It's just yeah, it's, uh... But this is a long distance match. I mean obviously the break comes into it, but it's probably one difference between no, I know you play a lot of snooker, Brett. The break shot in pool, it's uh It's a luck shot. You, you can't predict it, can you? No, it's definitely a luck shot. <coughs> and that's the what two things about the, the two games, snooker and pool. I mean this game is intense in a lot of different ways to what snooker is because it's very much a one-shot game pool at times. Yeah, yeah. You know, snooker is obviously a one-shot game too, but, you know, um, yeah. the difference is high-quality players in snooker, it, then the game becomes more one-shot. Yeah, yeah. Whereas eight balls, so that, that's the great thing, and that's the thing I love about the game, all the different aspects in it. Yeah. Scotty's played the combo and missed here. Yeah. Jake's back in with a chance. Reds, you reckon? Definitely Reds now. Yeah. Jake's been a bit careless in this match. Can he uh, swing off this middle red and open up a red and black sort of situation well, off two rails? Or uh, I think it's a bit thin. He has to actually you screw off. He, he screws off it and goes between the yellow and back into the red from behind. That's what I mean, yeah. That's the way with, to play. With a bit of left-hand side. Yeah, the, but he's not playing that shot, so he just roll them down for the one and then knock an air off the one over the hole. This one here. Oh, he'll screw into the yellow yeah, now. Yeah. Screw yeah. into the yellow now. That's a nice shot. That's this a much should better. This should be 5-2. But yeah, just a soft screw into the yellow. Push the yellow to the rail. I don't think I've ever seen Jake miss a black in a tournament like that when he just missed last frame, ever. Yeah, I mean, he, he always plays casual, but he, yeah, he but still actually, knocks him in. I haven't actually seen him miss a ball no, like that, Paul. No, he still knocks him in, yeah. like, as casual as he looks, he normally knocks yeah. every ball in clean. He does strike for the ball good, Jake, so... He has got a very casual approach, and looks casual, but he actually does strike through the ball, yeah. follow through the ball properly, so... That's We've just got another match fired up here in the middle table. Uh, Sean Budd and oh, Nick, Nick Howie. Howie. Another great matchup. Nick Howie with the uh, Spartan shaved head and full beard going on. I can honestly say 10 years ago, Sean was the best eight ball player I've ever seen in my life. Well, I'd say second best because I know you, you, you don't think much of quitting as a bloke, but uh, he, he could play the game. Yeah, well, no, yeah, pretty, hard, pretty hard to argue with that, but yeah, I don't know, I just... He was class though, Sean, when Absolute I first class, met Sean. him, oh, I think 99 it was, at the Nationals. He was playing absolutely huge eight ball. Jake's, we were playing uh, um, Sean in the semi-finals of the Princess Snooker Tournament one, one year. Mm -hmm. I was 60 in front every frame and I lost 4-0. Wow. That was <laughs> a bit of a hard pill, pill to swallow that pull, but that's how good Sean is. He was 60 behind every frame and he, and he beat me 4-0. So. Yes. This is a tough shot now for Jake. Yeah, Jake's um, out of sorts here. A little bit out of sorts. I think, uh, I'm not sure what you play here, Brett. What, what do you... Well, uh, it's a, if, can he pop this red? He can, he can. He, yeah, he has to pop this and play a double pull. There's no there's no choice here. You can't, yeah. Game. You can't get back off this red. It's impossible. I'd, yeah, well, he's playing the double. That's the only shot. Yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. He was on the rail. Look, Jake, Jake knows he's not getting it. He's more than likely he's not getting another shot. Not not more than likely he doesn't expect to get another shot if he misses misses this out. This so is, this is even a little bit tricky with the black because it is. It's not ideal. You don't look to play prime position on this pool. You just get a shot at the black. So you you come between the two yellows, like so. Well, you, no, it's oh, a that was better that, angle than we thought. That's nice. Yeah, please. that's nice. It's good this double. Is, this this is still a little bit tight into the middle. So yeah. I think I, I think he'll get it. But yeah, uh, I think he'll be taking a bit more care than the last black. That's for sure. 
om... Uh, Benny Noonan started over there. Who's been, been playing? The, uh, the knuckles stick out a little bit more on these tables than the uh, yeah, cocks. Making them. He's got it. It's a good shot. See how he had the players sort yeah. of trigger it in? Yeah, that's right. They're, they're a bit more like a nine ball cut. They're, they're not quite square, but they're... Yeah. Yeah. So, 5-2. Five 5-2. Two. Five two. Okay, we got... Who's Benny Benny playing? playing Ricky Lee, I believe. That's on the uh, loser's side of the draw, it yeah? Is, yep. So, it's uh, instant death to whoever loses. Yep. The thing about eight ball is you've got to really look at the set of the table and you have to work past the, past, past the, the out out because what sometimes looks relatively easy is actually quite tricky. You're so true, you're so, that's so correct. So you really need to look at the whole table and think, hang on, I have to be here on this shot, I can't be half an inch further up or down the table, yeah. I have to that, be here. That's where you, you watch uh, like Mark Robinson, Ben Noonan, yeah. when, when they break the balls, they always take the full minute nearly, you know, mapping yeah, everything mapping out. out. Yeah. That that first shot is where yeah. they do the whole work. Yeah. You don't see Mark very often get it wrong, do you? Even though... No, he, he calculates he, He's a very calculated player, Mark, very. This is a pretty much an ABC out for Scotty. But once again, though, that you have to make sure that you've got the right... Uh, the right He's, uh, he's come across that too much. Yeah, he's, 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 there you go. That's the kind of thing we, I was just talking about, Paul. Yep. Now, if this was in a transition ball to the black, and you need to be straight on this, well, you could possibly be out of business. Yeah, big difference so, if he's straight on that. Yeah, he just rolls absolutely. it absolutely. Now he's... It doesn't matter. It doesn't make much difference at this stage of a, of a yeah. frame. But these are the kind of things that that make, make the difference between winning a frame and losing a frame a lot of the time. Yeah, that's right. Now, what we've got to be thinking about here is his transition from what ball to the black. What's the easiest path to get these balls to make sure he, he cannot miss the transition from the last red to the black up? Oh, I'm thinking play the corner ball and screw across to the one near the black. See, the problem with the one next to the black, if he's leaving that to last... Yeah, that's what I mean, you get He on needs that. to be exactly in that position I was just mentioning. He can't be a little bit wrong, because it can go wrong. I think he can get on that ball now. Just screw across. That's that, that's what Scott's thinking about right now. He's realising that that's the problem. He to pot the black. He needs to be over that that. Uh, Ideally, you want to be coming and putting the black back into the red that is on the right hand side. You want to be putting the black into the, obviously the right hand pocket here, the top right hand pocket. But you need to work, map out this out so you, the transition to that's simple. Yeah. Not sure what he's doing. That's what Scotty's doing now. He's working yeah. that out. He's, he's overrun I that. I don't understand that shot at all. I think he thought he could hold. I oh, know. Actually, you know what Scott was trying to do there, Paul? He was trying to stun up, pot the, the, the yellow next to the black now, get between the gaps of the two yellows, and leave himself a natural angle to pot the pot the red and run through the between the two yellows to get put the black in the same pocket. That's what he was looking at. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pot, pot this red, pot one on the right hand side of the table, leaving a half ball contact so he uses the top right and goes between the two yellows and just runs a white out anyway. Uh, okay, that's okay. What he's, that's, what he's, that's what his plan was, he's and that's what his plan still will be, but that's if he can hit that one. He can't even hit it. Well, this is... Is this on this way? If this is on, he's got out of jail, here, and it is on. Actually, it is on, I think. I don't think it is. Is it on, Matty? Can you see? Matt, Matty, Matty says he's got well, half Matty a Coe pocket. I just told he's got half a pocket, which is enough on that table. Yeah. Scotty has got out of jail. He off the knuckle and Absolutely in. got out of jail. Um, that's, and that's just what, what we were just talking about. The situation just come up, and that's that's the difference a lot of time between winning and losing a frame. That's right. How often do you see an amateur player in that situation and they get out of sorts? That's right. You know, and they say, oh, I missed me last ball, or, you know, messed up. And on. That's the reason. Scott got lucky there, because at the end of the day, he, after he pots that ball that he potted when he nicked in, if he gets a slightly different contact on the yellow, 
he cannot get on that black. Yeah. He can't pot the ball with any force, so he cannot get on the black. No. So that's got out of jail there. But 6-2, there you go. Oops. Oh, Peter Knights has just thrown a chair. <laughs> He's alright. He's back in control. <laughs> What's the score with Rusty and... That's 1-0. 1-0. Ah, uh, good question. Jamie's definitely in control of this frame. It's a good shot from Jamie. Rusty's got a dead red end up on the table, so... Oh, there's a red over the hole, I didn't see that. Shot from Rusty Willie, so that ball he's got straight on the oh. dead ball straight away. Well, actually, he missed the shot. Yeah, put it well in the middle, screw down to the top row, take take the harder pot in the middle. Scotty's uh, going again here. Is it worth uh, just trundling on this over, or is he actually going? Um, I think he's looking at an angle to get the black he out. Is. He's actually going to try and screw off this, leave a half ball pot on the yellow into the same pocket as this yellow's going, and uh. dismount the black. Two good shots here, game's over. Oh, I can see it. He needs the angle, yeah, you're right, Paul. That's exactly what he's playing. And it's a bit of side oh, there. It's not I, bad. It's not a bad angle. I don't think that's great. Might be a no, touch. It's not. <laughs> yeah, he might just miss. He might hit the red, the outside of the red. Yeah. No, he won't even hit the red. You don't reckon? No. It'll miss the red. It's pretty thin. It's not as soon as it looks, Paul. He definitely has to use the top rail to get into this. Okay. Past the yellow, but. All Scott can do here now, he has to pot this ball and just get up the table, and then wherever he lands, that's what I'd be looking at. Wherever you land, just work work it out to get the black Yeah, you've got to make this pot. You have to make this pot, yeah. He You're did. Right, Paul. You're yeah, right. but he, he actually hit that thinner. He, he hit him, yeah. And he actually would have cannoned the black. Thinner contact, he actually cannons the black, not the yellow. Yeah, he did, the he did hit it too thick, didn't yeah. he? Well, he's left Jake hard up here, nearly, so... He's opened the black up too, he's though. Opened the, he's opened everything up. Jake needs to pot a ball here, obviously. I think... Possibly needs to pot... Uh, Oh, Jay's got two roll balls to contend with here. Couple of options. He can uh, take the one in the middle, or he can cut this one inside the yellow. The idea of the situation here, first of all, you, uh, personally, I'd be looking to get an angle just to nudge, nudge that that red on the rail off the rail as quickly as possible. Then the second, the, the second thing that needs to to be looked at here, you want to be getting close to this black. Mm. The closer you get to it, it's a lot, a lot, a lot harder to miss. So that's what Jake will be looking at, I would say. Is he going to... No. Jake needs to get on the red near the rail as quick as possible. I think we'll find him. Pot the one on the right-hand side here into the top hole. Pot the ball over the hole. You're not doing that. No, it's... Must be able to get on the ball on the rail. I think... Uh... I think that's a little bit strong. Would have been leaving that there. Can he run into it here? No. He'll be, be playing on it here. Has to play on it. It's actually about two inches off the rail, but yeah, it's hard to see on the yeah, camera. Yeah, it's not on the rail, but can he run onto it now? That's what I'm thinking. He's actually playing to knock it out. But the problem is here, with that shot, Jake's been a bit fortunate there in a sense, because if he actually hits the other side of the red there, Paul, he's got no shot. Oh yeah, you don't want to hit the back side of it. No. I was actually thinking if he hits it a bit thinner, you know, half ball sort of. Would have been nice, but obviously he didn't have the angle. 2-0. To who? I didn't see you on that phone. Oh. Not sure. Rusty's racking the balls up. The score says 2-0. I'm not so sure now, this which way. That's the problem. We're not getting rid of the red straight away. That's mm. caused the problem. I mean, 
Yeah, it's you now. You have to be thinking about that ball. The two problem balls I seen with that actual ball next to the rail and the plate. And they're the two that are left. Yeah. And Jake's on this. He's, he's on it, but he's played for an angle on it, so yeah, he can no, come back across. One good shot. Bit of soft, deep screw. We won't, we won't see Jake just actually roll this in and bounce across the other side of the table. We no, will be trying to get close over. to this black edge. So we'll actually be trying to put the white just past the centre pocket towards the ball end. Sort of coming across the blue spot. Yeah, this will be a stun, stun screw shot. This exactly like that. And obviously that was the right sort of angle. It needed it harder. We see Jake knock, knock these in, but look, this is a missable shot. Jake does seem to put a lot of them, but it's not ideal. Running side. Yeah, just flick it in. It's in. Clear. Nice pot. Very nice pot. Yeah, he just played it with a touch of yeah, running side. Played it well. Very well. 3 0 over there, Jamie and um, Rusty. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing it's Rusty then. Mm just by the speed of the frames, but I don't know. Uh, not sure on the score on Sean Budd and Nick Howie either. You yeah, haven't seen much of that much at all, even though it's steering us right in the face right in front of us. It's here. actually blocked out by the monitor. <laughs> it is. Nick has some control in that frame, but it's the way of the table. Scotty's come up. They're, dry. they're not getting balls off the brakes here. No. He's going off. Well, that's mm. a big bonus for Jake. Yeah. Well, there's no question he'll be taking yellows. Yellows, now. absolutely. So these all sort of link up too, don't they, Brett? They do, yeah. You just run down the table. And this is uh, the kind of stuff you, you come to the table and you just think, well... This is, what I, this is what I dream about. Yeah, this is lovely. <laughs> He's still got the jackie though, that's fine. He pots the, pots the plant, just stuns the other yellow across. I can't see much going on here. So you think stunning to the yellow? Yeah, definitely stunning to the other yellow, push it across. Just clear the balls a bit. You don't want to be trying to dolly this. You, to, well, you can run underneath like that. He's got a shot guaranteed. Yeah, yeah you notice he didn't overhit that, so no. he was always going to be on the yellow. Now we'll find Jacob. Well, this has become a little bit tricky. I think he's all right. Yeah, you know, he's fine, but there is a little bit. This is, once again, you need to take that care of working at the path. Jay, it's a good pace of shot, Jay. Jake's played there. Yeah, he can Now, the key here is he really wants to get rid of the ball next to the black. Yeah. Because unless he gets straight on the ball over the pocket after this shot, I can't screw back on the table. Well, I think he can screw back behind the shallow now. Has he got that angle? I don't think he has, Paul. No, I think he has. He has. Straight back. Yeah, he's screwing back. You're right. Yeah. Let's see how he's played for the ball next to the black now. He doesn't want to be potting the ball over the hole because... Two ways here. He could take the corner and roll the one in the middle, but I think he'll play it this ball Stiff first. Stiff the shot, Yeah. Stun back to the rail. Leave him straight. Just screw back up the table. Yeah. Now, once again, just make sure you give yourself a shot at the black here, we'll just make sure you clear the red. This sort of shot here. Mm. A shot at the left. Jake won't miss this, I don't think. Jamie Stevens demonstrate the push shot, which is actually a legal shot in snooker, but 
not a, not an eight ball, so. He actually played one on me yesterday, and I could not believe it. The ball was just above the the, the, the left hand side pocket, pointing towards the row with the wide just above it. Absolutely impossible to pot, and Jamie just went whoosh, and all of a sudden the red went in the hole, and I went, my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see? The, did you see that shot there? Yeah. yeah. Dean just brought up that shot that he actually played on me. Well, yeah. It had a little bit on the one he just played then. <laughs> I've just had a score update. Uh, Patrick Hood is 5-2 up on James Delahunty over there. That's, uh, that's a nice start for Pat. Patch playing really well. Yeah, he knocked off Steve Gray yeah, last Steve, round. Steve Gray last round. He uh, beat, uh, who was it bef round beat before Brent that? Collier before that. Yeah. So, yeah, Patch has definitely come on in leaps and bounds in the last five months. Yep. He's becoming a force to be reckoned with, Patrick. Um, apparently we've got some verbal going on here, Dan, that I haven't been reading. <laughs> oh, we've got the Geelong boys on the... On the uh... Hello, Jewish. Hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> send, send, send. send your friend. Is that legal, Buster Groovy? Chiefy and... Chiefy's on the judge, Judy. Send. Hello, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> She was unconscious a minute ago, like for half an hour ago, she was unconscious on on a chair, so I think I, I, I certainly hope she hasn't taken anything to wake herself up. <laughs> <laughs> oh she has. Oh she's on the mother. Her mother. <laughs> mother's woken her up. <laughs> when Rio gets on the uh, energy drinks we're in trouble. Is that scary seven nil against Salon? Yeah. No, Scary's what? Seven, seven nil? nil up. Wow. There you go. One thing about uh, Scary, he might, uh, he's got the determination of about three men, I think. Michael is just a sensational shot maker, Paul. Yeah, but he's, he he's mental game, determination too, absolutely, though. Absolutely, yeah. And when he's on his game, he, he just, he does it easy. He's, I've played him many times like his, and so just like yourself, Paul. Yeah. When he gets on, a, on his game, he's just, yeah. it's just simple. He's, He's, he's got that in his nature that we're... The competitive nature. Yeah, so yeah, he absolutely, he absolutely hates losing. <laughs> you got to have that. Yep. What's going on here with Jake and Scott? Who's at the table, Jake? Wayne Stubbs. <laughs> Hello. Send, send. The, uh, Brett, I think that send, one's for you. <laughs> Gary's 8-0. Michael's 8-0 now. Hard to get beat from that situation. Yeah. He's a great player, Michael. He's just a great shot maker. I think we'll see Jake pick back another one here, so this is very much more. Ooh. Oh, I tell you what. He's sort of let go of that. Mm. Still got a pot in the middle. But... He wanted to push through, but he uh, sort of let the white go in. with it. Not only does he have to pot the ball, he has to retain, to retain position. This is a tricky pot, let it alone. Is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh... Who was that? That'd be Velo saying, that's for sure. No. Yeah. Yeah, Velo. Oh, yeah. Well... Ben, ben is 2-1 up on Nick. Rick? Rick? Nick, we will get Nick. Here comes, frame, here comes the floater fresh Here's after his win, Steve Scott. Gray. How are you feeling? He's beaten a young up and coming Scotty Peel, so Steve will be more likely to get out of that match with a win, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jake's let Scott back to the table here, and this I cannot see unbelievable. Scott letting Jake back to the table here, Paul. What's the score? 6 4 to Scott. Six, four to this Scott. is a big frame. He knocks this ball in, this frame should be over. 7 fours, you know, Six, big four, advantage. Seven, four, massive, massive. Wow. There you go. Unbelievable. See the way he played that shot, Paul? He's made sure that the white, the white is where it is. 
Yeah. He's leaving Jake no shot. Actually, he can flip this back in the middle. So yeah, it's a thin but clip, but... Yeah, Scott sort of played the back up there a bit. Scotty Matthews, been around for a long time. How old, oh, is, how old is Scotty Matthews? Uh, Scott would have to be probably 39 now, I reckon. Yeah? 39. Nah, he's older than that. I'm I've got to say, I've played, um, I've played every good snooker player in the country. And honestly, Scott Matthews, at his best, is probably the second best player I've ever played next to Neil Robinson. So... There you go. A lot of people don't know that, but I've had Scotty knocking four centuries in a row on the snooker table and Mr. Blow off the spot on 98 for five in a row. So I've never seen I have never seen anyone do that before. So that's how good he actually is at the game. Yeah? Yeah. Neil Robinson, well, Neil's Neil. <laughs> Tell us about Neil. You uh, Neil is phenomenal. He is the number one player in the world. What, what can I say, Paul? Well, that's it. <laughs> He played a lot with him back in the... Yeah, uh, when he was young, yeah. We spent many hours together, Neil and myself, and some of the... I've never seen snooker played like Neil actually played. That's the best snooker I've ever seen in my, in my life live, but, I mean, I've seen Scotty do some amazing things on the snooker table too. Like I say, he's missed the blog for five centuries in a row on Princess number one table, which was a very tight table. So, that's no, no fluke. Of, uh... I remember Scotty picking up a rack queue at Potter's one day and knocking in a century and then telling me the queue was no good. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I've seen him change eight tips in one day too, so... <laughs> yeah. But, sensational player when he's playing well. Brilliant. This is a big turning point in this frame, I feel. Well, mic's off, is it? Well, they couldn't hear you okay. before, but now they're wishing it was okay. still off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jake's... 6-5. Um, managed to get back to the table, so you'll be He's feeling a lot better about this still now. Still right in the match now. Definitely right in the match. To all, to And that's uh, what I was saying before about eight ball being such a one-shot game. It's one shot that actually yeah. a lot of the time determines the outcome of... Of the, of the intensity. Frame. Yeah. That's, that's, and that's exactly, the great thing about the game. Like, that's exactly right. In my match earlier, I, I was 3 1 up, missed a ball, and with barely a, another shot, I was 5 3 down. There you go. It's, it's, uh, it's funny how it swings. Instead of being 4 1 up, yeah, that's five, right. you, I went to 3 2. Yeah. And, and he, then he's. And you found uh, yourself 5 3 down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's run out, and then off dry broke, and yep. didn't uh, get a look in, yeah. Jamie's on the black here, is he? He is. Well, he's missed that by a fair way, Jamie, so... Yeah, that's probably the only... Jamie lacks a little bit of firepower compared to some of the top cures. Yeah, but he, he, he does get quite a good percentage of those pots too, so... Yeah, he makes up for it, though, with his solid... Uh, Jamie's not that far off the mark for mine. Yeah. He's got a very good all-round game, so... Yep. Very good thinker of the game, understands the has, game. Has played for a long time. Played for a long time, and... He understands percentages, there's no doubt about that. 6-5 yeah. uh, to Scotty, yeah. And what have we got here, Paul? Scott's, Scott's got a... He's got a ball off the break this time. Yeah. Oh. There's one... Uh, he's, I think reds are the balls, but... Yeah, well, the problem is obviously the ball on the side rail. He might have to play the Red double. Red on the side rail. But really, I mean, also with the black down here... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know, mate. It's not an easy this, clear. This is tricky. No. What you could do here is you obviously need to get that red out of there as quick as possible. I think a good shot here, Paul, would be just actually pot this red, make sure you are on reds, then run off the side of the, the red that is on the rail, double it back across the table, and put the white heart up on the ball rail. Jake, yeah. Jake has no shot from there. The problem I see, he, he needs something down here for this black as well. Like. Well, he can get to that, Scott. He's good enough to get that off any ball. What's he trying to do here? Yeah, I think he's going to... Played for the double, or...? If no. he gets the white, if he gets the white anywhere in the middle, anywhere near the middle of the back rail here, Jake's in trouble. So he can flick the red out and run off with... Uh... Absolutely. Stun off the red with left-hand side here, between the gap of the, the, yeah. the red in the middle of the table and the yellow, and try to... 
your target's going to be the top rail, the middle of the top rail. If you can get the white there... You probably can in the red into the black too on this shot if you play that. Well, it doesn't make a great deal of difference, really. No, nah, as long as they both yeah, still... The yeah, white, the white's the key here, obviously. Unless you push it the other yellow, which is sitting next to the black, over the, the left-hand the left top pocket, then that's a disaster of it. Yeah. But uh, saying that too, he's got two dead rails and two two dead yellows in balk, so I'd be looking to put the white as yeah. near to the middle of the, the the back rail as possible. Yeah, I, th I think this is one of those situations where you, you do have the controlling stage in the frame, so you've got to get your problem. Needs to do it now. Yeah, yeah. You get your problem out now. Yeah. He's just played the soft one. That's not a bad shot either. He's kept it near there. Yeah, that's not a bad shot, is yeah. it? Yeah, he's, he's kept that near there so he can use it when yeah, he needs think to come down near the black. He's, he's basically saying to Jake, well, you go or you lose his frame. But he's, he's also contained Jake's yellow, but he's left the red on. Yeah. It's not bad. I think Jake has to just push this yellow over the hole now, doesn't he? Yeah, I, I would. that's the shot I would yeah, play. But I think I'm, that he has to, yeah. Yeah. To counteract what Scotty just done there. I mean, even then... Patrick Hood, six top on James Nellahunty. Yeah. I must admit, Patrick's really impressed me over the last 12 months. He's been solid. Yeah, he's been playing very good, Paul, and he's certainly right, getting right up there with the top players, no doubt about it. Rusty's on a nice black here. Now I think he's... Oh, he's missed it. Mr. Black. He's, he's jawed it. it. Oh, it's dropped in the it. other corner. That's 4 1. Wow. Now, Scotty here, I think he has to pot, play the red and push the black across the, the rail, Paul. Jamie's got a lot of trouble up in ball. Scott's got control of his frame, but he can't. Sort of screw off the red into the edge of the, the black. The problem is here is if he, Scotty doesn't do that, and Jamie brings those two yellows out in his next visit to the table. Jamie becomes favourite. This is true. So This is where you can't let your opponent build. Yeah, that's right. So Scotty needs to realise, and, and, and surely he has. I'd be just stunning off this red and getting the black up the table. Anywhere up the table. Like that. That's it. And Scott, see, that's, he's realised the situation and, and played accordingly. James Delahunty has just made a nice out. To 6-3 uh, then. Back to Back in just one sec, Paul. Okay. Jake's tried to double that off the uh, off the yellow. <laughs> oh, off the red, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Body now with a big chance, the red's all on. I think the black goes past the uh ooh. black doesn't go past the yellow into this corner. 
Uh, yeah, I don't even think he can squeeze it in. It's better. He's hit the knuckle. Oh, he's missed a red anyway. Yeah. Might be starting to tense up a little on that shot, I think. I don't know. And it doesn't normally miss them. That's where that last frame might have uh, changed things a bit psychologically, too. Jake's tempo stepped up a little and putting the pressure back on Scotty. You might find Jake uh, Jake just nudges, plays the yellow and pushes the black across safe. Here. Just play the yellow thin and push the black over near that corner so it's tucked up near the yellow. Got to make sure something hits a rail, but... Too bad. A little bit firmer than he probably would have liked, but it's still fairly secure. Scotty's got a tight pot into the middle to start. Played it off the yellow. Got to, got to find that last ball to get on the black. Definitely doesn't want it to be the tight red near the middle pocket. Uh, and he doesn't want it to be that one on the back rail either, so he's got to clear both of them out. Rusty's, uh, Rusty's gone 5-1 up on Jamie now. And uh, Ricky Lee and Ben Noonan are three all. Della got another one back, so that's 6-4. Uh, Still Patrick's way. Scotty's got fairly good angle, I think, here to run through on this red. Nice. Oh, he's come up a little shorter than he would like. Didn't quite get through as far as he'd like to, but this is a tight nick now. And he's played that very well. Wasn't an easy nick. So it's 7-5, uh, Scotty's way. Jamie trying to work his way back into the match here. 5-1 down. On the reds. Jake's winding up for the big break on the other table. He has uh, come up dry. Again, struggling to pop balls on the break, both of them. Left the white nice and tight to the top rail, but Scotty can probably nick the yellow in the middle and uh, plus run into the other yellow that's near the red. Oh, he's missed it.
Yikes. Jakes. Oh, and the uh, Brett, Brett Rogers has just informed me he's got to go and play his match now. So, uh, unfortunately, you'll be left just with me. Might, might not quite have the same technical expertise to it, but uh, we'll see how we go. Jake looking at uh, the yellow near the black, whether it sneaks past. Got to find a way to move that yellow beside the red. We'll get behind it, one or the other. And now this is why he was looking at this before. He's looking to run this in the middle and get a little nudge on the yellow, I think. Just a little bit of top spin, just sort of roll through. He's nudged it perfect. Well, not perfect, but good enough. Tickle this in down the cushion, come out. Yeah, you got to come out a bit. That's it. Now he can just tr trickle this in and roll the black in the opposite middle, I think. Or run through and play it in the corner. Either way. Yeah, he's played for the middle. So 6-7, uh, Jake pegs it back to. Scotty's still slightly favourite. 7-6 seven, up. And Rusty reels off another uh, frame over there to go 6-1 up. Still not sure on the score with Nick Howie and Sean. We don't know anything about that match. What is it? Uh, Nick Nick Howie is, is four three up on uh, Sean Bud. I think Patrick Hood's just missed a chance there. I think James Dellers. He's not got a, a clear shot here to pot out. Uh, Patrick's just missed the black. There's only one yellow and a black on the table. I think James possibly clip off and leave him long. And he has done. He's left the white middle of the back cush, probably three inches off. Yes. And the black's just past the middle on the on the side, so Patrick can't nick it in, I don't think. No. Patrick's He's uh, brought the black out basically onto the black spot. Left James with probably a six foot Half ball cut into the corner. The yellow is probably a foot and a half away from the corner. And running possibly towards in off. So it's not an easy shot. He's... James is going to have to play this well. He's missed it. Patrick's got a uh, straight long black. He's probably... Four, four and a half foot away from it. The black's a foot away from the pocket. He should knock this in, but it's a tester. Oh. And, uh, what's his name? Jawan has finally got a frame against Scary. He's 110 down, staging his comeback. <laughs> he's, he's got a bit of a sly grin on his face, as to say. I finally got a frame. <laughs> Patrick's knocked in the black. So, uh, seven, seven, four, seven, four to Patrick.
And Jamie's just uh, pegged one back against Rusty. So he's 2-6 uh, down now. Got here with a good chance here to get over onto that yellow on the side cush. You'll find him possibly cut this in the middle, I'd say, and screw across. Can also take it long, but... Hmm. Yeah, he's playing into the middle. He doesn't like it. Oh, he's he's come under that. He's he's got too deep into it. I'm not sure if he actually played to kick that yellow then. It was a strange choice if he did, I think, but... This is awkward. If he plays the double, he, it's very hard to get from this yellow up to the one up the top. So I think... Uh, I think he's got to play the long ball and run through, but even then, then from that side yellow to the black is hard, so... Not sure what he's doing here. He's tried to cut it into the opposite corner and left Jake on the long red here. frame over there. Della's won that frame, so 7-5. Uh, Patrick's way. Bit of a tough battle over there. Patrick's playing well. Jake with a beautiful angle here to just trundle this in and be behind the black. Rusty's uh, just about to chalk up another frame to go 7-2 up. He's on the last yellow. Stun that in. Oh, he's come up and down. And now just ABC. Pot the black. 7-2 up. Looks like Patrick and Scotty have gone for a break at 7 all. Ricky Lee and Ben Noonan still 3-4. Travis Crawley playing uh, Mark Robinson on the winner's side too. Not sure what the score is there. And Kurt and Alex are... Uh, the other match going still.
Okay, we'll just switch over for all you uh, Geelong fans out there. Patrick 75 up. Just, uh, sorry, the table's a little bit further away from the cameras, but it's the best we could do under the circumstances. And, and Juwan has got another frame against Scary. He's storming along now, 210. He's just high fived uh, someone. I think it might be his missus, yeah. Scary doesn't look phased yet. Where's uh Very hard to see the angles over there on that table with James and Patrick Hood, but Actually, that's not bad. We've got a view of the three tables over there. We can see Alex on the end table playing Kurt. See the edge of Robbo's match with uh, Travis Crawley. Oh, look at that. We could, Yeah, we've got that table. Oh, they're in a battle over there. So, surprise, surprise with Travis Crawley, one of the best tacticians in the game. What a, uh, what a turnout that would be if he could uh, run the tournament and win it. That would be a mean feat. A lot of work goes into running one of these tournaments. It's uh, run extremely well so far. I haven't seen too many hiccups at all. Oh, James Della's just uh, snooking himself on his last red. Well, new favourite, as they say. Jamie's uh, chance here against Rusty. Oh, he's come a little bit far, but... Got a, he's got two choices here. He can nick it in the corner or he can play for the middle. We've just tuned out of that, but oh, he had two shots on it. I didn't even know he's bounced it out. And now he'll just roll it in. 7 3. 7 3 now. Rusty's way. Okay, we're back with Scotty and Jake. You don't want to get Jake's motor started when he gets flowing. Danger time. Ooh, he's uh, got a bad kiss there. Stranglehold on Jimmy Della over there. He's laid another snooker. Yeah, he's, he's, he's laid a nice snooker. Might Scotty with a chance here. Jake was looking like he was in the balls and uh, he's just got that bad kiss and now Scotty's got a chance here to go 8-7. Uh, he's 
Yellow does slide inside the red in the corner. Patrick has laid an evil snooker on James over there. James has just touched up behind the yellow. Ball. Yeah, 7-4. I think uh, Patrick's got to play off this and may lay another snooker or Depends what happens. He's clipped off it. So Scotty here doesn't want to be straight on this yellow. He wants a bit of an angle. Knuckle perfectly. <laughs> Come out. So Scotty, eight seven on Jake. Okay, Patrick could now with the yellows on. The red's gone dead. Do we have that camera still, Dan? Ah, okay, okay. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, vision on this race, but as they near the 200-meter uh, mark, Patrick Hood is looking like uh, going game here. The red's dead in the middle of the top cush, so he's got free reign. It's down to his last two yellows. He's... Hasn't quite come back far enough on there. He would have liked to. No. Okay, he's nicked it up. Yeah, he's, he's just got to play this last yellow into the middle. Oh, he's overscrewed it a touch. He's overscrewed it a touch. Now he's. Not a straight roll, two rollings it would have been if he was back about half a foot, but now he's got to sort of nick it in and run around the table. The red is dead, as I said, but he wants to take the frame at this visit if he can. He's played to run it up. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's missed it, but it's in front of the black. James can play a nice weighted shot and get a snooker. Patrick will be able to come off the cushion and hit the yellow, but... This is... Got to get the weight right on this shot, James. He's brought the uh, red right out into the middle of the table, and he's left Patrick over on the side rail. Patrick's got to be a little careful here, because even half a sniff on James on that long ball, he'll knock it in. Oh, wow. Patrick's uh, played a great shot there and got a snooker back. He's kicked the yellow up the cush a bit, but he's got the snooker. Okay, 
I couldn't see it properly. James did have a clear shot at the red just. He snuck past the black and he's knocked the long red in. And the, the black does go now. He's on the black. He's missed the black. Unbelievable. He's uh, put his f hand up to his face after he's missed it. He's a bit disgusted with himself there. Now, Patrick, the yellow's on the side rail. He's not sure what he's going to play here. Back double's risky. He has. He's played the back double. He's left the yellow over the corner on the opposite side, so there's a lot of pressure on James. The white's up near the balk rail only. Oh, probably six inches off the balk rail. The black's out sort of halfway between the black dot and the side cush. Long pot. James is down on it. He's missed it again. Wasn't an easy pot. The black's gone safe to the side cush, but he's knocked the yellow out. The yellow... Now Patrick's got a uh, long ball. He's right in the jaws near the corner pocket, and the yellow's out on the blue spot, basically. He's queuing off the uh, knuckle of the corner. He's just trundled the yellow up. He's played it up, the yellow's sat over the pocket. So now James is sort of on the balk line and the black is on the right hand side cush down past the middle pocket. So he's played it down the rail and he's missed it. So Patrick now, just got to drop this yellow in. Black's, black's potable now, it's out. Yeah, he's come up the table nice. This, this is Patrick's frame now. And the black's gone down. And uh, meanwhile, Scotty spotted another black here while I've been watching the other table. 9-7 to Scotty. And what's the score with Patrick now? I think we've got it written on the chat, haven't we? Well, seven five, I think, so it might be eight five now. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was seven five, so I think that makes it eight five to Patrick. Rusty's 8-3 up on Jamie. Big chance here. Doesn't mind back in his uh, potting ability, Rusty. He's not too worried about having a long black. Wow. And he's missed it. Okay, back to Scotty Jake. Jake with a nice open spread here. He's uh, going to run through, take this into the corner, come out off the uh, corner red. Just got to come out in the open here. Clip it about quarter ball, half ball, come off the side rail, sort of near the balk string. Oh, he screwed it, that'll do. And he's landed, beautiful. Nine eight, Scotty's way. So Ricky Lee and Ben Noonan five all.
Jamie on a uh, sort of a blind cut into the corner. These are always a bit tricky. He's trundled that in nice. This will bring him back to 4-8 if he nails this black. table. Jake having a look around. Possible reds here I would say. We've got special guest Mark Kerwood's just jumped into the commentary box here to commentate the end of this match. Oh. No, hang on. Okay, well, he'll be with us in about 40 seconds. The mic's just got to uh, boot up. What about now? Yep. Okay, here we are. Beautiful. So, uh, you've played a fair bit with Jake, Mark. You know he's going pretty well. Yeah, one-shot game. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, always on the receiving end of it, so... Yeah. It's, uh, yes. it's a tricky little out, this one. It's uh, Yeah, he's got that red near the black. It's posing a few problems. If he can get he him might, behind it, he might or even try and screw into it now, will he? Yeah. Off the rail. Oh. And he does. He's just he's missed it. Uh, he's very, very stiff. He's tried to run into it off three rails. Just missed it. What do you think of the uh, Nick Howie hairstyle, mate? Yeah, Nick Howie, he's sporting the Spartan look, isn't he? He's got the shaved on the sides, a big sort of wide mohawk across down the top, and a big bushy beard down underneath. He needs the ponytail at the back to complete it, don't you think, Mark? I'm a bit worried about him. <laughs> You're a bit worried about him? <laughs> well, I've been worried about him since I met him, but... No, he's a good kid. He's a good kid, just doesn't listen. <laughs> Uh, he's going well, Nick. He's, yeah, he's uh, still in well. on the winner's side, playing Probably. Sean Budd. So Jake's played a containing shot there. He's yeah, it was a uh, very smart shot by young Jakey. Does have a few smart shots in his repertoire too, doesn't he? Scary, how are you? Fresh after your win? He's, he looks like he's feeling all right. He's got himself something to eat and a beer. He's just relaxing. Through to the last eight on the winner's side. Which Nick and Scary has the winner out of Nick and Sean Budd. What's happening over there with... Paddy and uh, James. Eight, eight six to Patrick. Uh, he'll be happy to keep that lead over the next couple of frames and uh, sneak away with an 11 9. I think he'd be happy with that. What's this? Jakey gonna do? 
Dipcho Cocos. I'm not quite sure who that is, but I'll try to keep you updated on the... Uh, I'll tell you what the scores are. 8-5 goes down. Ace, ace is up. Eight, so hang on one sec. Ace is up 8-5. Ace, ace up for 8-5. Ace is up 8-5. Yep. Okay. So Alec... 8-6 Yeah. Yep. So Alec is up 8-5 over Kurt. And I'll tell Patrick you what. is 8-6 up That's on James. That's a very nice shot there by Jake. What about the uh, Robbo-Travis match? Do you know what that is? 2-0 to Robbo. They've been in some battles over there. 2-0, two, two he said. He said, didn't say 2-0. He said 2-0. Oh, two, two oh, yeah. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Malik, the... Uh, Egyptian Elvis has said to Neil. To, 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 to him. <laughs> oh, mate, that's an awesome shot. Scotty has cued that in beautifully. Yes, he uh, he's a good shot. <laughs> good shot. -er. Good shot. <laughs> Nobody plays that shot better than... He's uh, still got a lot of work to do, though. Just trying to work out what he's... What his plan is? Do. Yeah. I'll tell you what my plan would be, it would be dropping in a snooker in behind the yellow near the black. Well, I don't reckon that's any good, but I reckon if he pots the one over the centre, and lands on the the black, close to the black, and then runs his yellow inside Jake's two reds. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, Scotty being a snooker player is not even going to listen to me. <laughs> no, no, I think Scotty's uh, looking at the out here, but it's big. Well, uh, he might be doing... I don't think he's landed on it, but... I don't think it's a bad shot. I'm uh, I'm a big fan of the snooker. Develop your bad ball and uh, boy, that run run the the pot this in the centre, run the yellow down, cover the blackish sorta, of, with a little bit of side, and then come out in between the yellow and the black. Mm -hmm. But I know I like my shot. I like putting the yellow down inside these two reds. Yeah. I don't mind that at all. But. What does Woody know? <laughs> well, Woody's just recently made a final at, uh, what tournament was it? Uh, Geelong and the semi at Albury. Geelong and the semi at Albury, yeah, so he knows a bit. <laughs> That's a good shot. Very good made, shot. Made previous state teams too. and Yeah, lost. Uh, Woody lost to Mikey, 11-9. Yeah, I played terrible. <laughs> uh, credit to Mikey, good, good cure. Uh, who won that frame? Pat, Patrick and James, I think. I think James might have won that frame. That's a pretty good shot. He's left the white in the right spot anyway. So Younger's just come over to watch the uh, Paddy James show. Just relaxing. Uh. Yeah, Joel's through to the last eight. He's got the winner of Alex and Kurt. I'll tell you yeah. what, uh, the yeah, old Iceman, Alec Evernatus, don't write him off as a big chance for this tournament, too. Very, very consistent. If you look at the uh, the top players who are still in, you know, you've Robbo, yeah, Joel, Alec. You know, He's a uh, very, very uh, solid, consistent performers. not, uh, especially in a big tournament like this, over long races, over the two days, it's it's all about the mistakes you don't make. You, you know, you can play all the big shots you want, but if you make too many mistakes, you're not going to get there in the end. What a game, Pikey. 9-8. Mm. Hey? Yeah, battle there. pressure out there now.
What's he going to do? I'm not sure he knows either. <laughs> he's yeah, still thinking about I'm it. I'm surprised he's doing this, but... He's just clipping in, trying to keep him off the... Uh, oh, he was trying to keep him off that other red. So Jake had to play this red, but... Uh, Jake can actually get it out now if he needs to, or wants to. He can also just get this red neat over the pocket, which is probably not a bad shot. Yeah, I think you'll see him clip off it. Yeah, see, if you get this right over the pocket, then there's no questions about Scotty uh, doing any damage there. See, now Jake's got the two reds on now, so... Yeah. I think you'll see Scotty run this yellow at the top and sit it. Yeah, Scotty might try and cover the corner and hope that... Uh, force Jake to play a double on the black maybe. Oh, actually you know what he might do, he might even just roll into it. Roll the yellow onto the red. Make it back not on. Tie it up again. Tie yeah. it up again. Uh, very strange shot. Right. Then again, he's left a hard black for Jake, so I think he's saying, Come on, Jake. Mm. See if you've got it. Yeah, well, this is. I probably wouldn't mind leaving an amateur this situation, but I don't know about Jake. <laughs> That's a nice shot. It's all about getting nicely on this black, isn't it? Yeah, he's, uh, the, uh, he's putting the pressure on, isn't he? Yeah. That's for sure. What? He's stretching over a bit as he he's come out. Oh, he's got a shot on it anyway. Yeah. It's a half ball, nick it down, or use the old stretches, didn't he? How do you uh, play this, Mark? Do you play it with any running side, or do you just cut it down? Dead center. Dead center. In the white, just cut it down. I think Jake was looking at a oh, no, uh, double or something there, but mm. play Just come off the rail a fraction. It was a bit stiff. Hmm. Just come off the rail. Not much in it. So Scotty, I would think. Oh, that one wiped its feet. Yeah, I don't think he was really that close on it. It looked like he might yeah. have been a little bit out. Probably can't run through on this corner ball and get on the one in the middle pocket. It's the only real sort of tight ball. Just stun, stun here. Just, just across, that's it. Beautiful yeah. for the centre. Perfect. Okay. Trundle this one in the middle first. Yeah, just roll them all in really. Yeah. Well, he's ended up straight on that. Yeah, he likes killing. Probably that's the way he plays. Rusty's going nine four up. Yeah, Rusty's going to be a hard man to stop in this tournament, I think. Yeah, he's just he's got his. Uh, he's got back. He goes. I don't want to walk too far. Yeah, he's just probably probably, <laughs> probably not as close to this yellow as he'd like. Do you? Yeah, it probably looks harder than it looks on TV. I think. That's why I didn't take it earlier. They are quite tight into the middles. Mm. But no problems there for Scotty. He goes to the hill, 10-8 up. Yeah, 10-8. Jake's disgusted that he missed that black. Yeah. He goes, I'm not very happy about that. He I think Scotty sort of took the option of, well, I've got to let Jake have a go here. I've got to force him into taking it, sort of play. But 
I might just pop over and see what the score is with James and Patty. Here we go, Jake breaking off again. What's the score here, Joel? Patrick is 8 7 up on James. And he's come up dry. And Scotty's got pretty much everything. He's obviously going to pick yellows here. So, yes, 8 7. More open. Pikey's back now to join us. And yeah. Just went for a roving scroll. Scores, yeah, Patrick is 8 7 up on James. And Robbo is 3 0 up. On Travis. He's obviously playing well, Paddy. Yeah. James is uh, not giving up though, he's making a comeback. <laughs> Lord, you would expect James to give up really, would you? He's a fighter. Yeah, look, if they're there, he'll take him. So 10 8. Wow. Yeah. Benny's. Uh, 7-5, is it? As Rusty moves to 10-4 up. Yeah, I think uh, Ben Noonan, yeah, he's... Yeah, Benny looks like he's starting to get into his stride, actually. And, he, you know, a lot of people have said Benny's not, uh, not performing, really, at the moment, but I tell you what, when he gets his stride going... Yeah, okay. Benny goes 8-5 up. Uh, he is on the loser's side, a long way to go, but so no, not hasn't really got the advantage. But I think he's probably got to win about another uh, seven matches on the loser's side, probably to get back to the final. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Seven or eight. Yeah. Well, I think I just played in the last 32 in the losers. Yeah. So it'd be about so... seven, six, seven. So what do we got here, Scott? He's on and out. Yeah, it's got his, uh, his hardball is, I reckon, the one above the black. Mm, he's got he a land, because it doesn't go down the bottom here, bottom he, left. He doesn't. If he plays this ball in the book rail, he wants to have an angle still on this yellow to get down, because if he comes too far, he could be in all sorts of trouble. Yeah, well, he's got a land perfect on this. Yeah, he, he probably stun into the red, maybe. No, he's come back this side. That's it's a little bit short. Mm. It's just not ideal. That's why I thought it was always going to be a bit tough. What do, what do you think about running into the yellow here? No, he won't go to the bottom pocket. I mean, he has to go. I'll go he's yeah, got no choice. He has yeah, to he's go. He's got to pot it in the middle. I think he might even run into the yellow. Just yeah, well, actually, that's probably his best option. Half, be half ball on the left-hand side of the yellow. Oh, you're pretty right about that. I reckon that's probably his best option. Unless he screws. Looks like he's playing a deep screw. Oh, wow. That is that's a great positional shot. What do we know? That's Mate, huge. That, that's, that's what Brett was talking about with Scotty's cue ball control. That's just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a great shot. Yeah. Screw into the red here. Yeah, if he can. No, I reckon he will. Hold on the red. Soft screw. Yep. Oh, you saw the white spinning there. He played that with a lot of side, which he generally does on him. shots. Tell you what, so it's only 10-8, but that could have been a critical, critical situation there. Jake. Ends up sneaking this frame and then 10 9. Gets one back, all of a sudden it's 10 all. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, 
How are we going? What's it's, happening here? It's a big change, isn't it, Pikey? The, um, How do we re missing that ball? No comments on the commentary now. Hmm. So Jake's got a very good opportunity here. short there. Mm. I tell you what, Scotty could look back at that last shot that he missed. It could end up coming to haunt him. Yeah, well, Jake just needs just a bit of luck like that, doesn't he? Just the one shot. Yeah, well, at this that's, level, it's just amazing. That's this game, isn't it? One shot can cost you two or three frames. Even a match. There's a nice shot. It's landed beautifully. Makes it look easy, doesn't he, Pikey? He does that, Jake. You, uh, if you just watched him, you'd think that uh, he wasn't putting in any effort at all. But... He's full on in there, isn't he? Yep. He, uh... Run through. Black in the corner. Ten nine, Jakey does it. Ten nine, come on, Jakey. <laughs> this is where the the, uh, the little twitches can come in now, can't they, Mark? A bit of fresh scoreboard pressure coming to the end of the match. That's it, mate. You're going to try and control those emotions and nerves and just focus on just potting the balls like they're any other ball. That's it. Play like you're playing at home. That's it. As soon as so you start thinking about the line and that's, uh, what's the score here, Jamie and Ten, ten five now. Ten five. Jamie's still alive. Benny's He's gone, only got to run six racks. Benny's gone eight five, I think. Scotty with the uh, softer break there. Just kept the white nice and tight to that yellow somehow. Very interesting break. Yeah, they didn't sort of open up, did they? I didn't see too many balls hit the rail, did you? No, I wasn't paying attention to that, but yeah, they sort of all just moved out and none really... I think Patrick and James are in a bit of a ugly frame over there as well. A lot of balls in groups and packs. not good. Rusty 10-5 up, ready to break. <laughs> Do we have a score on uh, Howie? Howie versus Bud? No, I haven't. These, um, these guys down here will know. Do you know the score on this match? So here we go, Scotty's got Five all shots. between uh, Nick, Nick Howie and Sean Butter, five all. Five all, locked at five all. Alex is 10-5 up now on Kurt. And Della and Patrick Hood are eight all and locked in a battle. Wow. Which one, the Robo Travis? Yeah, they've had a few battle frames. Mark playing super, super consistent pool at the moment, Mark Robertson. He is, isn't he? 
And since he's come back from England, I think uh, just hanging around with all the world professional snookers, he's come back treating the eight ball game in a very professional manner, hasn't he? He's uh, every shot. I didn't think the shot was on, but it um, looks like it might just be on. So Mark moves to 4-0 uh, up on Travis. Mark Robertson, 4-0 on Travis Crawley. Patrick Hood's going uh, going for the game here. He's got his last yellow to cut in, and the black's sort of amongst the reds, but does go into the corner. He's got a thin cut on the yellow, though, so it's running towards the black. Not sure. No, it's a he's great kissed, shot. He's kissed into the black, and he I don't think it passes. He looks, he looks happy about it, though. Maybe it does pass. Patrick Hood on the black. He's nick, nicked it over. He's just caught the edge of the red. He's hammered the table with his fist because he knows he had to pot that. James now with six reds on the table. Ah, uh, yeah, so Scotty's still got two shots. Can't see an easy starter. James with a big chance to go 9 8 up on Patrick here. Well, all the reds are on. And he'll just clip off the bottom, the bottom red, I reckon he'll go off. This might actually be on, is it? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's actually on. Yeah, black's on. for the match. And Scotty, Scotty has beaten Jake 11 9 That is a great effort. Rusty lining up the uh, double on the red for his match. 10 5 up. Didn't quite hold for the black like you would have liked, but still cut all. And confirmation, James has gone 9-8 up on Patrick. And that's the match. Jamie Stevens lost to Rusty 10-5, 11-5, sorry. James Della 9-8 up on Patrick. Very, very close. Patrick's got a nice open spread here on the yellows. Six, I think, seven.
So, Alex 10-6 on Kurt now, I think. In the background there. As Travis Crawley and Robbo continue their battle frames over there. Travis a specialist at uh, slowing the pace down and uh, Patrick playing the uh, combination shot there. He's kept the yellow on. I think uh, big chance here, big chance to go. She played it off the red. Takes the corner yellow, rolls the yellow in the middle and rolls the black in. Looking very solid. So this for uh, nine all between Patrick and James. Nine all. Takes his time, steps back, pulls up the shorts, comes in. And bang. Taps the table, congratulates himself. Good shot. Nine all. A lot of intensity inside there. Like a pressure cooker going on, keeping it all under control. James, 9-all. See if he winds it up for the big break. Looks pretty keen. Bang. What's happened here? Dry break. Shattered. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have the Jamie Stevens commentator extraordinaire on in a minute. He's just... Just uh, going, on, going for a few minutes and then he'll be joining me shortly. So Patrick with first dip at the yellows here. And we've got Scotty Matthews just come past to drop over his skew. What? How are you feeling, Scotty? Good win? Not bad. Not bad? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So Scotty through to the last eight on the winner's side as well. Things uh... Patrick Hood a big chance to go ten nine here. Get to the hill first. here but I might be able to hold on the black it's hard to see oh just held he's got a thin thin cut on this yellow so uh, losing the white a bit here because if he was back a couple of inches it'd be pretty straightforward but now he's he's got to nick this in pretty thin got to contend with the red in the middle pocket He's come off the jaw of the middle pocket. So left himself a long whack. See if he does the shorts again. He's, yep, no. He took a breath. He's pumping the cue. Psyching himself up. He comes back over. Oh, Robbo's there. He's, it's funny how things like that can... See, that, 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 that just affected his rhythm there, I think, with Robbo coming into the picture. He should have stepped back, restarted the whole motion again, but 
sometimes just little things like that, you know. So Della with a chance now to go 10 9. James making a mistake here. Runs through. Couple of options here. And Alec has won against Kurt. 11-6 or 11-7, not sure which it was. 11-6, I think. So, uh, Alec will be playing Joel Younger in the winner's side later on today. Kurt moves on to the loser's side. Not sure where. Could possibly be playing uh, Brett Rogers or Dale Watson. Maybe in about two or two rounds time, Sam Lilly on the uh, loser side. James on a relatively straightforward black. And he does, he moves to 10-9 up. Patrick will be kicking himself. Just glanced across here. Ricky Lee is back to 7 8 down on Ben Noonan now, staging a comeback. Uh, Nick Howe is 6-5 up on Sean. Patrick, big chance here in the balls. Hopefully uh, not affected by that last opportunity missed. Played that off the yellow. It's quite a big shot. Ended up with the white on the rail. Pushed through. Hasn't quite come up as high as he would have liked. Might have to take the long red now. Yeah, I think he's got a... Is he on it? Is he on it? He's having a look. Oh, it's hard to tell by the mannerisms. Think, I think he might just be on it. He's, he wasn't on it. He had to play the double. Oh, no. He sort of snatched at that. And 
and uh, two visits to James. Unfortunately, I think that could be Patrick's last chance. So, James will just come out between these two yellows. Work his way up the table. So James uh, has missed one, so he's going with one here, but makes it gives Patrick a slight glimmer of hope. He's got a, he's played that well. Just knock into the yellow. Got to be careful how you do this, though. Unless you can stun past it, but I'm not sure. Looks like he's screwing off it. Uh, the yellow must go pretty easy. Taking his time. Taking a moment to compose himself. Comes around and checks the angle. He's down on the shot. No waivers there. He's half ball cut into the middle. And it's over. So uh, Patrick Hood moves to the loser side of the draw. James Delahunty advances to the last eight on the winner's side. And uh, I believe Dan's just setting up the camera so we can get some live coverage of the Howie Bud match. Meanwhile, Jet Ben Noonan is 9-7 up on Ricky Lee. Nick Howie, 7-5 up on Sean Bud. Uh, he was 3-0 up. I'm not sure what it is now, Mark Robinson. Possibly 4-1, maybe. back in about two minutes.
count the balls, mate? We're all there. I can't break. I saw the last one. Didn't the rule change where the same one hits? It's all good. <laughs> That's the new Nick Howie rule. That's the rule. They count the balls. Same one hit the cushion three times. The yellow up there. Seven five up here. Open table by the looks of it. Yep. Now, as you can see, this is what we were talking about with this hairdo. I think the ponytail at the back would just complete it. opened up the red, tickled that one in the middle. Possibly he's come out for the uh, red closest to it into the other corner. Oh no, he's covered the hole. It's very, very smart player too, Nick Howe. He plays with a quite good, uh, more, I would say, offensive tactics well not so much offensive but he plays a lot of uh, blocking shots like like that and and just balls where he'll, he'll drop a ball in between a crucial uh, potting line of one of your balls sort of to make sure that if you are going it's it's a lot harder you know blocks off a lot of options and then sort of builds and uh, once he's got all these reds you know into the uh, favorable position he then uh, can get up and pot them as well not sure how much two shot eight ball Sean's been playing coming from uh, New South Wales but I know he has played the game before so uh, not uh, no stranger to the rules, but I just wonder whether Nick Howie might have an edge on him in the tactical side. played a similar shot to what I was talking about with Nick before. It's just a blocker. Just moves the yellow into the path of the red.
Nick just pushing that one up. Uh, I think he would have been happy with it over the pocket, but still got some options now. Just having a look whether he can nudge this red off the cushion in front of the yellow, sort of. So it's potable, but blocking the yellow. Might even be able to play it off the cush, off the other yellow. So, uh... Gotta be careful with that, though. I think just bouncing it out halfway is probably a better option. Leave it there, so you... What's he looking at here? He's looking at combination shot, maybe. No? Not quite sure what he's... Ah. He wanted to play that a little bit firmer push the yellow right over. It uh, hasn't come out that good because he's left the two reds tied up and he didn't quite get the yellow over as far as he would have wanted, but still, I think he's still favourite here. Not uh, not ideal, but Sean can secure this pocket possibly. Yeah, that's a good shot by Sean. That's a great shot. Now, Nick, do you pot the yellow, or do you try and get those reds out? I think he can possibly pot this yellow, but he wants to nudge the two reds, maybe, to make them on. So you don't want to be left with those two reds not on. Yeah, that's what he's done. That is what he's done. He is... He's deliberately screwed into the reds to open them up and potted Sean's ball. He's got lucky keeping Sean off the other yellows. He's, uh, he's given away the two, but he's left Sean in all sorts of trouble here. I'm just uh, not sure Jamie Stevens has come along, but I think we've got to boot up the mic. I'll put this one on and then I can hear you. getting destroyed by Rusty Wheeler. That was fun. We did watch some of that. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. Yeah. I think he's going to be a hard man to stop in the tournament, Rusty. Yeah, he's a very flowing player, and he, uh, he, he he doesn't actually change his pace at all, regardless of how things are going. He's a yeah. difficult man to play, and uh, you can't afford to miss chances against him if you're going to beat him, and that's pretty much what happened. But yeah. anyway, on to this match. And uh, Nick Howie affectionately known as the white Mr. T. <laughs> All he needs is a bit of bling around his neck and uh, a, a, a solarium run, and he'll be flying for Mr. T lookalike award. Yeah, he's going well. I was actually saying how if he put a ponytail at the back, he could uh, quite possibly have the Spartan look going on. Got the last get of the, the Mohicans. Get the, ma get the main roll on 300, you reckon? Yeah. He's been pushing players, though. He's been using his cut break. I've seen a lot, and he's actually trying to force tactical frames he, against these guys that like to pot. It's funny you say that. I've, I've noticed he is playing a very, very tactical battle, tactical game uh, over the last few matches. This is basically what he, what Nick does. Is if he's playing against someone he doesn't believe he can out pot, he will cut break, leave a pack there, and try and force a tactical frame so he, that way he can even up the odds a bit. He's and just potted Sean's again. Shot. I think he's... he's Deliberately giving away the two there, but 
He needed to keep the wide up there, though. That was absolutely paramount. Yeah, he didn't want to go in off. Sean's looking at his table thinking, OK, how do I actually get on this? Obviously, because Sean can put the white wherever he wants, he can put the white ball on the left-hand side. He can double the shallow way and just try and get position on the uh, yellow that's sort of below the black into the middle pocket. It's the only way I can see this, but uh, it's, there's still a lot of excellent white ball control required. He's going to full table, double this, and land behind the other yellow. Yep, and uh, Sean's white ball, well, in, in uh, snooker is brilliant. I haven't seen a lot of uh, him play this weekend. I know he's a very capable cueist. Well, it's pretty good. Well, that's not bad at all. Might have Would have to. liked half a foot more. Mm. But probably can sneak through the gap between black and red. Even a, even a cannon, top side of that red to the right of the black will be sufficient because it will bring him out enough to be on the yellow in the middle. If he's got the angle, would he uh, like a little nudge on the black here? I don't think there's any need, only because it goes in the middle and you actually yeah. risk, you only risk um, snookering yourself if you do play that shot. So I, I think where the black is is fine because he'll be able to get back down the table later on in this, in this uh, pot out. Yeah. Just readdressing a couple of times. Just needs to get comfortable on the shot. Yeah, we were just talking about that earlier when Patrick missed a black. He went through his rhythm and uh, just as he was about to get down, Robbo's come across him and he stood back up, but he didn't go through the whole rhythm again and he ended up missing the black. can be a lot for, you know, people's routine before they play the shot. And Nick has got his wish here. Sean has given him another opportunity and Nick should get these. Oh, yeah. I've actually seen a couple of times... He, um, no, it hasn't affected any sh any shot that he's played, but he, he's got a lot of body movement um, after he hits the ball. You'll see, he gets really anxious sometimes. And you see heaps of movement. Yeah, he's a, he's a very emotional person. He keeps it in well when he's playing. He tries to, but uh, I have seen him have the occasional blow-up. I'm actually... Uh, I don't think I'd actually be playing this ball if it was me, but it's not that big a deal if he pots it. Yeah, like you say there, even on that shot, you see the body movement after the shot. He does move a fair bit, but as I said, I haven't I haven't seen him actually miss a ball where he has actually really thrown that body out, so... And just in other scores as well, um, Ricky Lee's given Benny a hard time. The score's currently 10-7 Ben's way, he's just got another frame. Uh, they may have actually finished because no one's at the table, so maybe the match is over. Somebody's just commented that uh, nobody beats Sean, Sean Legend with tactics. I'm sorry, Benny Randall, but uh, unfortunately, Sean is not one of the stronger tactical games in the two-shot game of eight ball. He doesn't play the game very often, and that will be attributing factor to that but he is definitely without a doubt one of the best killers in the country yeah uh, I used to love watching him play snooker as a kid I actually watched him play this is coming back so long ago I watched him play in the under 21s on ABC and he actually won that comp was that uh, color TV back then it Jay? was mate it was and I really enjoyed it and uh, he gave Quinton a smash up too actually yeah and uh, just yeah, just watching him go through uh, through the motions then when he was amongst the balls, uh, I could tell how good first he was, and I really enjoyed watching him play there. Yeah. Watch, uh, watch the body movement on this shot. Yeah, See, really after the shot, shot. Yeah. He's sort of trying to beat Donny Cole, but <laughs> That's, you, no one can compete with Donny on the body movement. Uh, nobody moves like Donny. <laughs> But he's actually uh, got the white ball on a string yeah. and queuing the ball very well. And moving to 8-5, I believe, when he pots this. And actually, I would like to give him a bit of a uh, hard time because he had a massive sook uh, before the big gun started about his having to pay $400 entry fee. Well, Nick, you keep doing this, mate, $400, you may end up paying 550 if you keep carrying on like this and uh, making getting big wins against great players. Yeah, that's, that's... So, in future, pull your head in. 400 was definitely a good price for you. Might be might be uh, rocking it for the best intermediate, too. He's not I intermediate. mean, not, not intermediate, semi-pro, no, sorry. There's no best semi-pro prize, yeah. I believe. Oh, there is, I believe. Really? 800. Oh, if you had told me that earlier, I wouldn't have lost. <laughs> 
Yes, 800 for the best semi-pro, uh, 500 for the best lady, 1,000 for the best novice, and 800 for the best intermediate as well. There you go, so everyone's getting a, a piece of the pie, which is a good thing. Yeah, plus the uh, prize money for finishing in the top, whatever you finish, 12 to the first. And there's an out-of-bullets comp as well, which basically I think is a race to three, so a much smaller race, but there's no way we could fit big races in a second comp in two days. It's just not possible. No, uh, just on that, I wonder when they are starting the out-of-bullets I believe I believe it's due to start, or it has already started. There you go. So they were starting at two, I heard. Um, so, yeah, there's, oh, Steve Jamison's over there. He's actually had a pretty tough draw, and uh, I thought he actually gave a pretty good account of himself for the weekend. Yeah. He'll, he'll give the out-of-bullets comp a big shake. Yep. So Nick's uh, got first opportunity again. Which one? Yes, we can actually tell when the Sydney viewers pipe up on the uh, chat feed. It's so obvious to tell a Sydney Sydney person. Uh, it's usually because you guys just make stupid comments. Oh, that should be blown about, <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> They're uninformed comments, I might say, because of the hate for the two-shot rules over there. Yes, it is a very different game. Different set of tactics. I'm not loving the uh, Nick Alley stance on this shot. And he has missed it. He actually stands does seem to be a bit inconsistent, doesn't it? He was a bit like. I don't know. And uh, the Budmeister doesn't actually have the easiest of outs here, and that is mainly because of this ball at the bottom of the table. Yes, it does go, it's not obstructed by anything, but position and good and a good pot will be required. He might even try to run into it now off this middle ball. Yeah, the angle actually looks perfect. Um, but the problem with his shot is, if you actually don't get some kind of contact where you're not going to be, where you're actually not on the red, you may not be on the, another ball. Yeah. Especially if it gets contact on the left of it because the yellows will stop the pot to the middle. So, yeah. I don't think that's, I actually don't think this shot's probably worth taking on. If you can slip, if you can actually uh, slip past the yellow and beyond it, that's great. But to me, it looks like it's going straight into the red, and it is. And I tell you what, well, he's probably been a touch unfortunate there, but he still is on the red to the middle, so he can keep this uh, out going. He has promoted it a little bit, making it slightly easier, but... Possibly. <coughs> Wanted to come across table just a little further there, um, but still. He can actually leave that red on the cushion for his last red. Take the two up the top first. Yeah, I think this ball in the centre of the table he has to play now. Um, it's going to be too hard to get onto the red that's on the bottom of the cushion off it, or use it as your last ball to link off it. So I think he has to play it and stun the side rail. Unless the camera angle's deceiving, he's actually got the run there. No, he's no ways he got the angle to actually run through. So, no. but he is leaving the ball, so it'd be interesting to see how he how he maps this out. Out. Yeah. I think what we're going to see here is him he trying to get as straight as yeah, possible. Yeah, he wants to land head. straight. The, the only reason I don't like it is you've got to give yourself. Obviously, this shot has to be perfect, or you get yourself in big trouble. And also, the following shot, he needs to land oh, in a very small area of table because of the two yellows. Yeah, he's got to play two very good positional shots now. Uh, if anyone can actually do that, it is this man on screen because he is an excellent controller of any white ball in any Q sport. It doesn't look too bad. Slightly off straight, I think. Run through. He'll probably hit the side cush just before the corner pocket. Oh, oh and he's missed a pot. Well. He was definitely perfect on his last red hat. Uh, he made the pot. Mm. He just, I think he just tried to pinch the pocket a little just because he was slightly off straight. Yeah, I just didn't think he needed to do that. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, if you actually, uh, 
if you need a little bit more movement off the white, you can always put a touch of left hand side on it. Obviously, it makes the pot a bit harder, but for a player Sean's ability, he can certainly pull that shot off. So, but Nick now has not really the easiest of tables available in to, to clear at this visit. So you'll see him start playing uh, tie ups. He'll kick this ball off the side cushion and just run for cover. Yeah. Sean's play is here. He's I, I think I think all he could do here is just bump the red on the right off the cushion a bit and just leave the white ball hard up on the yellow. I don't think he has a lot of options. Yeah. If he can actually bump it in such a way where he blocks um, Nick from being able to run off the yellow on the side cushion. Well, he's gone the aggressive double and he's also gone for a very smart billiard shot at the same time. That, that'll put Nick under the pump here. Those were the shots that I reckon back in sort of 99 he was making big shots like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I completely consistently. Agree. I remember him playing Travis Crawley in the Australian singles. The first time he'd even played in the Nationals and he, I watched him double a ball in the middle deliberately off the back cushion and I just thought this guy's a freak. <laughs> uh, he played for it intentionally of course and actually gave him the out. Yeah. I actually it might have even been the black, I can't remember now, but whatever it was it was ridiculous. He's put the pressure yeah. back on Nick here. Nick Howie's old man's just come to the background and make sure we're not giving his son too much of a hard time on uh, on the live stream. Yeah. He's, he's got his fists ready to give me one in the back of the head. <laughs> and that's a big yeah. shot from Nick. If... Well, Sean had to... Hasn't gone in, though. And... Sean put the pressure right on Nick there, and he had to come up with a big shot. Yeah, he had to produce... I wouldn't imagine Sean could chop this up from here. And that's perfect. He'll just screw back sort of half the distance of what the distance between the red and the white is now. Or oh, just stun across. I didn't realise that angle was like that, so never mind me. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, he will make the out and uh, he will bridge the gap back to 8-6. Eight, 8-6. Six. Eight, six. still going on in the venue there's tons and tons of matches still to go in fact I think I've got about a four hour wait before I play my loser side draw now yeah you've uh, jumped a couple of rounds there on the winner's side I would like to run a couple more on the winner's side so I don't have to play pool for like all day <laughs> this is true every every match you win on the winner's side you skip two rounds on the loser side of the draw so the longer you can stay on the winner's side without losing the better better off you are Right, Nick Howie's got a big grin on his face here. I'm not sure what's going on, but well, I'll tell you what. I don't see a real easy out straight away. I think he's just going to play safety again. Well, actually, I do reevaluate that. If he can actually take this yellow long to the top corner, run through to give himself an angle on the yellow to just to the right of the table, he'll just be able to nudge onto the yellow and red that are, uh, on top of one another, mm. and then he'll actually be able to produce an out. So this is the key shot right now coming up, potting this and getting the right angle. And he's hit that too soft, in my opinion. I don't. Well, he might be able to come off side cushion and get the nudge. Unless it does go into the corner. Yeah, that's another good option too. It might be on. He might be just taking a simple road rather than trying to be too fancy like me. Well, it's it's hard to see, but if it is on in the corner, then yeah, it might be what he's played for. Not sure about this yellow down the back cushion either, whether it goes past the red. I reckon it does. 
he's stood up. He needs to check the angle again. He's not happy. So, okay, obviously he wants to land right on the bottom cushion after his shot, play that yellow. I don't like that, and I'll tell you why is because you'll be you'll be potting the yellow dead straight, and you're not giving yourself a positional shot afterwards. No, it's no good. Well, now he's doing a bit of Brenton Collier pointing. This is interesting. I've only ever seen Brenton do this. Oh, Brenton loves to uh, loves to let the crowd know what he's about to do. He, he does. He loves to point. He loves to do the cue shake. Yeah. So Nick's, I think, reevaluating what he's going to do here. Yeah, it's about 30 seconds, isn't it, Jamie? No, probably a bit longer. He's actually never been the fastest player in the world, Nick. Um, but I think this shot actually deserves a bit of attention because it's not as straightforward as it might look. So he has got this shot. To me, it looks like he can actually screw off the side rail and still still land on a ball. The problem is, how is he going to transition his bottom ball and the cushion now if he actually does pick off the other two first? Because if he screws off the side cushion here, he can land on the red that's just, oh, sorry, the yellow that's just below the red. Now, the only thing he really do is pot it and then stun into the red, and then he won't have an angle on that next yellow to transition to the bottom ball. Unless he can catch it thin yeah, and go up the table. This is not straightforward at all. Well, he's played a pretty good shot there, actually, but the white... Uh, the, he's come a bit short. The rail killed him a touch. But he, a lot of movement there as well. I think if he came up another foot, he could have played the uh, yellow back between the two reds. Well, okay. I think he was playing for the left of the three. Yeah, yeah. And then the yellow back between the two reds. Yes. Mm. And then just stunned down for the for the one on the cushion. Yeah. But, uh, it's re-evaluation time now. He'll be looking for a safety. Not a lot of places to hide here either. No, I can only really see maybe... Screw uh, in behind the red? Yeah, that's the only shot I can see. It's got to get it right. And even then, Sean will probably have an easy clip off, put Nick back in trouble. Exactly right. So he may even try and cut this across. He has tried to cut across, but he's, caught, he's got it cushioned first and left Sean perfectly Open the start. table. I think you'll see Sean clear these. Yeah, very important that he pots the bottom of the two reds that's over the left centre, so he clears the path the other one. What's that got to do with me? How do we re refresh this page, Dan? Uh, standing behind, just, just caught Gordon. himself a choker. What about, do you think uh, when you were on that black and then Robbo come across the shot and then you got back down, you reckon? Yeah. You were in a panic. <laughs> oh, well this red goes in between the yellows, that's a bonus. Oh, he hasn't. Maybe it didn't go. Maybe he was playing for the hole. Well, no, he's looked at it like... He's looked at it as if to say, that was definitely on what have I done there. But he's in a pretty good pretty good shape still. It might have been in half a pocket and he tried to dolly it in. And I can tell you from experience in these tables, it's actually very difficult to play a very soft shot to a pocket. They do tend to... The nap is so strong on these tables that they actually will move a bit, so... Got to be very careful with that. I actually yeah. fell trapped to it myself when I played Rusty in the last match. I tried to dolly a ball in and it just ducked away from the pocket. And I nearly picked it up and threw it. So I'm 
not sure what Nick's looking at here. I think he might be trying to double this yellow off the side cushion, off the red into the middle. I don't just don't think the shot's even on. He's, no, he's playing a very smart attempt at a safety shot, but he hasn't got it right. And it's so a little bit short. Out. Sean here is uh, the queuing could be awkward plus he's probably stretching a bit so I think that's why he might be denying the shot although I think he's mad if he does deny the shot because to me it doesn't look that hard to get position but he's, he's denying it big shot there from Sean I'll tell you what he's probably I don't know if he's actually 100% happy he's bought that because this is actually a really hard positional shot He's got to come cushion first, and he's actually got to clear the yellows. And if he swings too far, he's not going to have a shot. So this this shot, you really want to play it with, with drag, catch the red half ball, and you can probably land even if you use a touch left hand side, and then you can land on the black to the left centre. Big shot this actually in the context of the match. And he's hit, hit it very hard, but he swung around the angles. That was very deliberate. Probably didn't want to land that far up, but he just wanted to clear the whole area and give himself a shot. He knew if he got out to the centre table that he'd have the black to the corner. So that's that's good thinking from Sean rather than trying to be too cute. And I'll actually back him to pot this nine times out of ten because he is a very good cuist. This may add an element and drop it back to six to seven out of ten purely because he's worrying about object balls possibly potting. Actually, he does look comfortable on this shot. Mm. And he smashes it in like it wasn't even there, and he will bridge the gap. 8-7. Mr. T says, up here, you fool. Mm. I, I actually said to Nick, I actually don't mind it. I think he just needs to trim the beard a touch. But I don't mind it. I reckon it's a good look. I wouldn't mess with him anymore. Nick's just taking a quick break and uh, we'll resume that match shortly and we'll just watch a little bit of uh, bit of Ronan Kennedy action going on on the, uh, I'm not sure if he's in the loser's comp or the, and he's playing Barry Wakefield. Paid enter. Congratulations on being a $400 entry next year. <laughs> 8 7 to Nick. Brandon Kennedy is just going off his chops right now and he's just potting all these balls. <laughs> Death Dealer, one million, has just uh, given it to Nick. I think that's ten million. Eh? Is it ten million? Ten it? million. I didn't even, I didn't even read the numbers quickly. <laughs> Why are you giving yourself a name like ten million Death Dealer? I don't know who you are. Put your name in the chat immediately. Classic example of why not to lift your head, Nick. Well, he did lift his head. Yep. Ronan Kennedy has just played a pretty average positional shot. He's got a half a, uh, half a pocket here. My missus just came over and gave me a quick peck on lips. That's not unlucky. 
He's played the trick. Oh. He must have two. Oh, he's just played that like a muppet. Puts hands on hips, scratches head and says, what happened there? <laughs> Who threw me in the canal? <laughs> and we're back at 8-7. Sean Bud checks the white, lines up, goes bang, Rex Hunt style. He's come up to everywhere. He's not happy. He didn't get a ball in, I don't think either. No, they're a bit messy here. Sean will want every single frame to be open. Even, even I think even if he doesn't get a ball off the break, he'll want all the balls to be open <laughs> and just want Nick to chop up. I just want Nick to be under pressure at all times. I'm not sure about Nick's stance, actually. Yeah, I was just looking at that here. Bit, aw bit awkward. Maybe Mr. T just doesn't do frontal stances. I'm not sure, but... He sort of bends both knees inwards. It's very it? weird. But it's working for him at the moment because he's still in the winner's half. Just hit that like a fairy, and it has not gone in. Right, these yellows are horrible. 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 They are terrible. I think Sean's looking at potting this uh, red with the yellow. Actually, you need to be really careful with this shot because this can actually leave the pocket <coughs> open very easily. Mm. And I don't think there's any value in playing the shot. The, uh, I don't think the red up the top goes past the yellow. If that red on the top doesn't go, I'd be looking at just moving these balls away from where that, that bottom pocket is as soon as possible. But even coming off the side cushion and, and playing the bottom yellow across table, it wouldn't be that bad a shot if that red isn't on. Uh, the black's pretty tied up as well, so obviously those two bottom balls are pretty good candidates for uh, making the black on. So he's gone to double instead. And that's a good shot. That is a great shot. Now here's, a, here's an interesting thing, because the only ball he's, he's really going to look at here is the bullets, if the red is actually covering, playing it. So that will open up that red, and only the black will be the issue afterwards. He does have an option to play, and this is a big shot, but he has the option to play the yellow that's directly below the white in a straight line, punching that in and coming off side cushion and then kicking that yellow across the table that's at the bottom. Big shot, but he's capable of playing that shot. Yeah, he's sort of got to make a decision here what, which way he wants to approach this frame. Yeah, and I think the other issue too is you can't really just go potting balls willy-nilly because those two yellows in the black are absolutely dead as a doornail. Uh, so you've got to actually manufacture them somehow if you're going to try and pot out now. Yeah. I think Nick's an absolute dollar four favourite at the present moment in this frame. It could change rapidly, but at the moment, he's a big favourite. And he actually needs the frame too, just because if Sean does win his frame, that'll be three in a row. Eight all. Eight all, that's right. So we might see that shot that I spoke about earlier. But it still doesn't deal with these two yellows on the side. So as you can see now, he's lining up. Okay, I'm going to stun off the side cushion. I'm going to go into the yellow full ball like this. Now the shot just needs to be executed. This is by no means... This is actually an advanced shot for guys that are learning to play the game. This is an, very much an advanced shot. I think he's tried to hold the white. Yeah, he's tried to just screw in and hold it. Yeah, he tried to soft screw that, but he just actually just got a bit too much on the white. And now, now he's actually in a fair bit of trouble. I'm actually wondering if those two yellows double. So if he can play the, the double to the opposite middle. It's hard to tell with the angle, but he's looking at something else. Possibly yellow off yellow at the top corner. That's a big shot. Yeah, this is risky if you move these. I think maybe he's just going to promote one. Yeah. That does leave the black on, though. That's actually a smart shot because he deliberately can the can the red. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd be real comfortable playing that black to the middle on these tables, Pikey. They, they uh, are they're tight. Tough. Yeah, they're tough in the middle. Yeah. 
So I think that's a smart shot. And yellow and Sean's yellow is definitely available because it's a it's a much better angle than what the black is. Actually, yeah. that black does look very tight into the middle. I'm right behind it over here. Yeah, I don't I don't fancy that one bit. But uh, Nick will commit, and the, the good thing for him though is if he can just get high on these two balls at the bottom here, he can just flick it in and then just can into the black. So, and he'll know that already when he's committed to this X. He's definitely committing. And he's missed that by a fair bit. And I think the next shot was going to be the cannon. Just where the white ball is, it's just natural. Does Sean play the uh, pot in the red over the hole? Put the yellow there? Yeah, I don't like that shot. He could have done that a long time ago, and the next ball's in a better position now. So I think maybe he might try and chop this ball in the middle and get a cannon. Back cushion with left hand side. Yep. Sorry, right hand side, not left hand side. Oh, well, it was actually way thin than we realised. And he's missed everything somehow. <laughs> so here comes another big double. So you're not sure if you can avoid the red here, though. Yeah, this is a bit too big, this one, I think. <coughs> so he's just looking at this double now. I'm just. The double's obviously gettable, but I, I just don't know whether the white will. Uh, I think it might throw maybe too wide and just clip the red. It's hard uh, to tell. 100%. The white's running towards the red. Yeah, if this was a big white, I'd say you could avoid This is why he's screwing off this. This is actually enormous shot. I'll, I'll get him one out of a hundred to get this shot. Well, he's actually tried his back door and he's killed it. Yes, that's dangerous. I think I'd have almost been content there with just bumping it out and, and forcing Nick to play the cannon there. The shot that he's played there is probably one in a hundred. This is interesting because... Well, Nick now has a free shot at extracting the black because mm. of the red, the red covering the yellow, so he'll... Well, I don't actually agree with this shot one bit either. No, I don't think... I think that's actually a terrible shot. You should have actually had a dip right there and then... Yeah, I don't think that... Uh, you give Sean a chance to produce two doubles here. Mate, that's exactly what I'd be doing. I'd be potting this and I'd be going up for a double and I'd play it... I'd give yourself an angle to dead weight it. So I can land on the black for another double. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think if uh, Nick's rethought about that shot, he'll probably realise that he had a free shot of getting the black out there and taking the frame. But, still in a lot of, lot of control. had to push through on that and like you say they are quite tight into the middle they are they're tricky and he didn't even get near where he wanted to be yeah yeah he's hit it a little too thick so surely Nick will have a dip now he's still too scared to pop this ball at the bottom corner he might even play the uh, the combo here with a little bit of uh, running like right hand side to bring the black out I don't even know what he's looking at here <laughs> He's not pushing the black up, is he? I just, this is just ridiculous, this shot. Like, what, I, I can't understand how we can't see the out. But I can tell you one thing. He has actually got a full control, so it's not that big a deal, I guess. But why would you play that shot when you can actually extract the black pretty easily and have a dip? So Nick has actually put the brakes on 100% and basically said, Sean, if you want to win this frame, you're going to need to pull out miracles. Maybe, I'm not going to take the risk. Maybe he's going with the tactics to uh, draw this frame right out and just take all Sean's energy away. Possibly, yep. Because uh, he knows he's got Sean well covered here. I'll tell you what, if Sean pulls out a big face cut double here, <laughs> he's going to have to load up a lot of left hand side there to avoid the double kiss. I'm pretty sure it's thin enough where he's got to use side and that makes the shot ten times harder over that distance. So. He, he can also come off the top cush with side and this is the, actually, you've just said the better shot, Pikey. That is spot on. Come on, let's try and half ball this uh, yellow off the side cushion into the middle. This is the shot. Well, 
he hasn't. Oh, he's gone. He's trying to go off two. Three. Four. He wants it to travel up. I'll How's this it. angle? Oh. Nah, it's too thin. There's no way he can't pot the reds. Can he? Yeah, no. Maybe he can play a massive force stunt <laughs> run through double. He's having a look at it. He's, he looks like he's thinking about Actually, potting. I don't, I don't, I don't mind his shot. Just pot the, pot the red with the yellow. I don't mind the shot at all. That's a very good shot. No, that's it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. He, he would have liked a bit closer. Sean's come around to have a check. Nick's come around to have a check. <laughs> so what if Nick does lose his frame from here? He may want to actually go and check his uh, suicide alert watch because. It was not a good a good option that he took. Was he trying to screw into the black now? I don't think so. That would be lunacy. <laughs> that would be one of your shots, Pikey. I think he might have been... He's gone too far easily there. Now he's got to play a pinpoint shot after uh, this red. I think there's a gap beyond that black. Yeah. Oh, okay, so Paddy's just gone. He's confirmed that it's actually uh, a giant gap, so... Nick should take the frame now. If that's the case, why isn't he playing it now? He's not quite on it. He mustn't quite be on it. I'll tell you what, he won't want to start looking at these balls too closely. He'll beard foul. He'll <laughs> beard foul. What's, what's the rule on uh, if your beard hairs fall out on the table? And I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Well, this that's, is not that's ideal. Worse. This is not ideal. Yeah, I agree, Patrick. She said, why not just drop that in, run the red down over the hole and use your two. I don't mind that option myself. But he looked like he might play his cushion first. You got me. I, th I actually don't think this is as hard as it looks. I think this is actually not too bad. Well, he's snooking himself though. And he's oh, almost put the black Jesus. He does still have two shots though. Yeah, all he's got to do is make contact with this red. Any half ball contact will probably be okay. Yeah, I think he's got a big mass A swerve around here. I don't think he's going to play that. You don't? Know? I think he'll come off side cushion half ball. I, I think he's got to swerve to get the... Rewind it. Rewind it. That was pretty close, so I can't tell. So someone mixed just said that he thought he hit the black first there. And so he's, he's had to play the mass A swerve. That was off its chops, that shot. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to actually have a look. Um, it's too late now, obviously, but we think there's a possibility that when Nick played the red that we, um, where the black was earlier on, that he may have hit the black first and foul. I'll tell you what, the direction the black went, I can't see how that's possible. Because it's gone straight at the table, so he had to have come off cushion and then hit the black. Oh, that looked fine to me. It's yeah, simultaneous. Yeah, you hit the red, you hit the red. Anyway, it's done and dusted now. Nick's just he he made a big shot there, and he will take a 9-7 lead. Big frame. 9-7, that was a big shot. And that's what Nick does. He is capable of pulling out the big shot when he needs it. And, uh, yeah, there is a little bit of fortune involved in when you're coming off and getting the kick out. Cause obviously, if he had hit that full ball and pulled, put it to the rail, then he would have been in all sorts of trouble. But fortune favours the brave. Although he wasn't very brave earlier on in that frame when he didn't have a dip. But I think, I think what Pikey said is right. I think he just tried to draw the frame out to take away Sean's rhythm and just frustrate him a little. As he cut breaks again. And, well, they spread pretty good this time. But Sean may have a dip here. So the way I see this straight away, you'll take yellows. Pop the bottom left one. Give himself an angle just to stun into the red and clear the other yellow. And he's just got to contend with the uh, the two that are stuck together pretty much in the middle of the table. Yeah, 
so I think yellow is definitely the balls here, Jamie. Mate, do you want me to get you a chair? Let me grab you a chair. Hey, Jamie, I've got something for Cubal TV for you. For the crust? That's interesting. But you have played on, you did play your money match on that table. It is, it is a fair call. Well, I think a couple of minutes at least is to cue a few balls. So Rubbo has basically just said that uh, Rusty's played every single match on the Riley tables, and believe me, guys, the Riley tables play very differently to the other tables in the room. Robbo's played every single match not on the Rileys, and he just wants a quick hit, and he has been denied the opportunity just to have a couple of minutes hit. I think that's probably not a fair thing. But I think I think it'll get reversed. I honestly do. Like Rusty's over there having a hit on it on it himself. Yeah, Rusty said we're ready to have one. <laughs> yeah, if I was if I was Robbo, I'd say Rusty, get out of me way, you giant beach ball. I'm having a hit. <laughs> oh, look at this, Rusty's practicing his markers doubles. <laughs> anyway, back to the match. I'm sure that'll get reversed. Otherwise, Travis is doing another pool roar. Travis, Travis is filthy that Robbo just smashed him. What, uh, this might be coming back to the, uh... Jamie's going to sort the situation out. I think it could have come back to maybe some of the comments Mark made on Facebook that Travis didn't appreciate. Probably, yeah, but uh, Robbo's probably got the PR of his mum when it comes to uh, <laughs> the being diplomatic. Yeah. His mum's terrible with PR. And a good shot there from Sean, and I'll say why, because the black is just about to get extracted. The old extraction. Into the red and just move the black. He can hit the red pretty much full ball. The, the, the black will just tickle out center pocket. You don't even need to play it that firm. No, you, do, you just got to move the red. Well, that surprises me a lot. In fact, I'm very surprised at that. Maybe he didn't have a very good angle, but to me it looked perfect. This one is just a bit more screwy quiet. Maybe he's just going to play.
play for it. No, no, there he goes. But this, see, the reason I don't like that, this is actually hard to get position. If he had left the other yellow there, he could have actually got position off it. <laughs> Just been confirmed by Lee Gilpin that uh, Sam Lilly did cop a beard foul in the EDPL years ago. That's what happens when you try and mimic a uh, character off the Guess Who game. <laughs> Robo's got his practice drills going on. A bit different practice to Rusty. Rusty was practicing the markers doubles. Robo's doing a uh, three ball line up into the corner pocket. And Sean Ike's actually expected him to miss that on this table. And I reckon that could cost him the match just quietly. 9-7, yeah. I, I think if Sean was to go back and look at how he played that out, he would just should not have actually played that yellow that he played first. Well, I can see. Well, sorry, he should have played it, but he should have got the cannon straight away. If he took it off the first one, then he can roll that yellow in. Exactly right, yeah. and he's got the black in the middle, and that's, that's how I saw it. That if you leave that ball in the rattle, you've got to screw off on this table. That's a very big shot, because they do draw pretty heavy. On one of the other tables, I'd say, would have probably taken it a bit easier, but yeah, they're tough down the rails, these tables. They make you uh, really play them spot on as Nick begins his snooker conquest. <laughs> Okay. So just so you know guys, um, the feed will drop off for a, a short period of time and a new link will be put up because uh, we can only put four hours worth of feed up at once. So obviously when stop things stop, you'll know why. And you'll just need to find, you just have to grab the new link off the uh, Q-World TV page and, and start again. So Sean's had a dip at tripling. I think Nick's got an easy run out here. When I, well, say, when I say easy, he's still got to be made, don't Well, they? I just wonder if he's going to look for another snooker again after that last frame. You reckon he's going to play another snooker? Well, surely he's got to have a dip here. Like, I mean, how much easier do you want him? <laughs> do you, I don't even know what he's looking at here. Like, is he just, like, yeah. worrying about missing? Or what? I don't understand what's going on. So now he's... What is he looking at? He's playing but I just about guarantee every shot will be a snooker if he misses he's a pot. Just, he's not just a red on top of the black. Yeah, I think he's gone into a bit of a negative mode, and he really needs to be... Like I've said to Nick a long time ago, just back your ability, you actually pot as good as anyone else. So, two cushions extraction. I don't reckon it'll happen on this table. They throw too wide off the rails. Good well, he's call. actually used side, though, there. He might just roll this in and play the one cushion extraction. Yeah, he's checking his angle now. <laughs> Power of the beard, eh? Yeah, the beard is shining. I'll tell you what, I would like a bit more angle than that. He's actually got to force this a bit now. Yeah, he's quite got the ideal angle. No, I reckon I, reckon I would have liked to have gone through another two inches. Though. Just like when I'm at home. Look at that stance, Jamie. Look at that stance. That stance is not right. <laughs> Fix that shit immediately, Nick. And you see, that's what happens when you've actually got a force of light. You can actually not get the force right, and you can miss, it, miss the can. If it was just a yeah. natural angle, you just you don't have to worry about that, putting anything on the white. That's where, you watch McGill, like, it's all in position, natural angles, and that's where you want to be. You want to, the less you have to do with the white, the better. Who's this McGill you're talking about? He's a I'll, muppet. Mate, I'll, I'll see he position. didn't even enter. His positional play is the best I've seen. <laughs> No, in fairness to Mick, they asked him to pay two and a half grand enter, which I thought was just the most Did stupidest I? thing I've ever heard in my life. I didn't know that. Yeah, two, two and a half thousand. Yeah. And, well, he's missed that by four kilometres. Oh, my goodness. He I reckon that black's on. Awkward queuing about to be uh, faced. Maybe Nick's feeling the pinch a little bit. I think he is, mate. I really do think he's feeling it. And I don't know why when he's 9-7 up. He should be flying right now. Well, Nick's got probably a touch of fortune if this bike doesn't go. 
Sean might have to come up past him to play the long way. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether he's not comfortable playing the shot, whether he just puts it over the kick. I mean, it's a bit of a negative shot, but you know, leave Nick a hell of a lot. You know, Save so him to play some ridiculous position shot, he may not land. Look at this shot, he's gone too short, he's landed exactly <coughs> wrong. And that is good night. This would be 10-7 now, I'm pretty sure, unless he produces some miracle. I think this is going to get smashed. Now the problem with smashing this is the rails are actually throwing really wide. Um, they're very tricky to judge at angle and pace as well, so I've actually found the harder hitter than it's just so much harder to judge. But that's probably the case on most tables, so it's probably a stupid comment I've just made there. So anyway, he might even try and rest on this black. And he hasn't gone in off. Well, he'll, 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 he'll take that. He puts his hand up to apologise, but I don't think the apology was required. If anything, he should have apologised him for earlier for playing such a terrible shot and still getting lucky. <laughs> but anyway, Nick does have a chance to, to go game here, but I don't think he will take it. I think he might play a half ball on the red and... A little... Yeah, I think Nick knows that all Sean's got to do is move the black and he's, he's basically got an easy out. I'm not sure what the whole... I'm not sure what that was all about, where he sort of put his hands up like he was about to fire a gun. But he does a lot of body movement after he shots. He certainly does. This is going to go over the kick guaranteed, surely. No. He can play to get on this, Red. I know. I just didn't think he would after seeing all the negative shots that he's already played. And you can already see him lining up saying, oh, OK, if I leave this white ball here, will he go in off? So uh, he's just going to leave the white ball on the side cushion. I think he's trying to psych himself up for this. I think I, he might be taking it on. I disagree, Pikey. But then again, if you're saying that and I'm saying he won't, then you'll be the right person. <laughs> And you're right again. I'm sick of you, Pikey. Get off the <laughs> mic. His angle's not great, though. This is actually... That's probably almost... Well, I obviously could have gone further left of the table, but it's not a nice angle. If he, just, if he chooses to run through a dead way... No, he still won't be on the black. He's actually got to screw off an offside cushion. So he's going to be playing black in the same pocket or plays some crazy two-cushion shot and come back for the black in the middle. He's got to play a pretty big screw here, I think. Well, I tell you what, I bet you he pots this with heaps of body movement. He seems to nail these big shots, I'm telling you. He is a master at nailing big shots in big matches. I tell you, looks like he's going to kill someone. And I tell you what, he's cued that so well. And 100% credit to Nick there. I just don't understand his mindset when he has a dip at a hard out like that and doesn't take on a really easy out in the earlier frame. But he will now go 10-7 up, providing this black goes in. I reckon he'll almost headbutt out us in the... Because uh, we're he's, we're actually directly in line with this, so he could headbutt us. Check the stance. Jeez, he's taking a long time. He's just getting himself fully prepared to play this big... Big black. And it's in. He he does a bit of a fist pump. Ten says, seven. hold this mate, I'm going to put the score up to ten. <laughs> <laughs> he can't he's Rusty Rusty did this to me when he got the ten. I said, geez, you're being a good bloke, you're starting again. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he's not going to touch it. We know it's ten. He's filthy. He wants the he wants the double figures on the he wants the double figures to show. He wants the psychological edge. And he's like, Sean, man, I can't put it to ten. What's going on here? <laughs> Sean's like, don't worry about it, mate. We know you're ten seven up. It's just, it's everything will be okay. Uh... Yeah, Sean said, yeah, Yo, you dump your head in, mate. I'm going. To, I'm going to take a wee. <laughs> Uh, 
this is actually a very big match. Uh, we will obviously skip to the uh, final frame once it begins for that match. It's been very entertaining, very strange match. Two of the most consistent players in the room here, I'd say. Not sure what Joel was doing there. He's obviously just trying to play a little... Okay, Joel's on the reds. That makes sense. <laughs> in yeah, high sides, Joel shot. didn't just miss a pot by two foot. <laughs> well, unless he went and had 10,000 on Alec to win the comp. And he's just making sure that he wins his match against Joel. Alex so is... here comes the black. Now, if you actually want to see very clinical eight ball, you probably couldn't pick two better players to yeah. uh, learn it from. <laughs> Both players don't do a hell of a lot, try and leave themselves stun shot after stun shot to simplify the outs. And I'll tell you what, once the Rusty and uh, Robo match starts, I would really like to get involved in that because, well, after the after the uh, final frame finishes, we will, we're going to go do that match because I know Rusty's pretty keen. Oh, sorry. Once the match concludes, we'll... Uh, We'll go and watch Robbo and Rusty because Rusty's hungry for blood after the Australian title loss. Look, has he missed and gone nearly in off. And uh, Alec hasn't really been uh, putting a lot of time in this game in recent years. He's loving the golf and he's enjoyed his time not playing. But sort of guy that only needs to put in a couple of weeks solid work and he's back to his best. As he misses after I say that, give him praise. But that actually wasn't as simple as it looked. Now Joel has no choice but to face cut double this red. line up the face cut. There is a gap with the yellow but it's just I think it's too hard a shot to play. I'd much rather take the double on and try and make a clean pot. So this match is just about to start and we're gonna we're gonna stay with this match until it ends. Very, very massive contrast of styles, and I think that's what making, is making this a pretty entertaining match. As Joel misses the face cut, and puts the white, and the yellow, sorry, the red in a pretty good position. Dry again for Sean. Oh no, he's pot one. He's pot of red. Clustered red and yellow on the left. Black and red, a bit dodgy. So nothing easy. Mm. I like, I actually like yellows here. And he says yellows. And Kurt is standing behind me giving me the greatest advice. Current Australian champion telling me how to play the game. I love it. And probably telling me all the right things too. Hmm. He actually said to put him for sure and go straight into it immediately. Sean said no buggy Kurt, I'm playing a different shot. Is he going to run through and extract the red and yellow that are together or? I think maybe just stun into the red near where the black is, because I don't think that black goes. He's not doing that either. This cannon, he's got one. He's, okay, he's dealt with one problem. Now it's just the black. He's got so many balls in the area where he can actually uh, get a cannon. But also the black will go to the top left as well once the yellows are cleared. So he may even elect to just play that shot. It looks like it on camera. Let me have a look at it behind the shot. I'm pretty confident it does. <coughs> Jeez, I don't like that. Well, there might be some value in... Take the rail ball now and get an angle to run through on the yellow and just nudge the red. 
Yeah, I think that's the shot. But the thing is, you've got to get part. You've got to clear the first yeah. yellow to make the other one on. I would have actually gone top table then and cleared that rubbish up the end because it looks to me like the flow of this out is going to go up table, which isn't going to help him get position on the black at all. Mm. Same position. Yeah, he's just pointed where he wanted to land. Well, no, actually, he's looking at it off the yellow, but he, he did want to land a lot lower than he has, just so he could, he could play. Like, he only wants to move the black an inch. It's just, as long as there's some separation and the black is on, that's all he cares about. And I don't think he's got the right angle there either. No. So he's going to. He's going to give himself an angle maybe to screw into the red off the last yellow. If he can hit the he's last red fairly full, he'll have a shot at the black. He's so doing that's what he's looking at now. Proverbial all the eggs in one basket. He may even try and screw off, off the back cushion and land behind the black as well, for that corner I spoke about earlier. That's what Kurt Dunham would do because he loves to move the white ball around the car park. So that angle is going to be coming off side cushion and back cushion if he's going to play that shot now. Deep screwed. Unless we're just missing something here, but... Deep screwed. He doesn't even look like he's getting into this. I oh, know he is. And he's cannon the red, I think, by mistake, and that's not good. Is this on, though? I'm pretty sure it goes to the corner, not the middle. Big shot coming up here, because Nick will clear if he... If he does miss this black, and it'll be end of the match. And he just, geez, that was game. I would have got that close to the black. <laughs> so here comes a large shot from Sean Barty. And that is not small from the Bud Man. As he goes to 10 8 down. That is a big black. And he sends a message to Nick saying, Do not chop up, brother. Okay, Ice Man on the black. Tough black, this on these tables in the centre. There you go, I spoke of it. They, yeah. they do drift across the, and, the lip. And the problem is you can't give them any pace either on these tables. Oh, they're very, very difficult in the middle at angle. So, Joel looking like one nil. Joel will have a strawberry. Back to Mr. T. Mr. T. And another cut break. Wants to tie this match up and end it. That's what he wants to do. So, uh, might see a pocket cover here. I can't believe that. This this um yellow that he's looking at is very thin. Mm. He actually might be able to play cut it thin, run off the red, and dismount the other yellow. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, I'd be able to just get I'd be able to just get the pot with this shot. Look at this shot. He's played it, and he's well. He's trusted to a touch of luck, and he has got it indeed. Ball available in the middle, well, natural angle, almost looks like I might cannon the yellow on the side rail. Yeah, it looks pretty close. They re I mean, the yellows could have turned out better than they have, but they're, they're all available. They could have turned out a lot worse too, Jamie. Exactly right, I'd be happy with that. Black got a sort of... Black did a bit of travel and got up towards the corner as well. That would have sucked for him if it went in. <laughs> yeah, he's played he the run. That, but he hasn't landed very well. What's the risk you take when you uh, cannon into it? Yeah, I thought he hit it a bit hard. Mm. You just want to, you want to cannon those sort of uh, just with enough uh, speed for it to reach the uh, end of the table, not fly up up the end of the table. So a plant coming up here. This is a big plant too. Now the problem with Sean is if he doesn't get this out, Nick's just going to cover up that bottom left pocket straight away. Oh yeah. 
Nick will be onto that like. Uh, He's already thinking about it, I can tell by looking at him. That's missed. And Nick will pop this bottom ball on the right hand side of the table and then put the ball at the bottom over the kick. But you will play it in such a way where you'll be cutting the red so that way you cannot play the plant and the yellow to the yellow in the corner. You let me finish. <laughs> uh -oh. I noticed as you said it. <laughs> Might even pop the uh, red that he's closest to as well. How are we going on the verbal there, Dan? Anything happening? Terry Axford's got on the live stream. So as as I said, before, before Kurt jumped the gun, didn't let me finish. He's going to cut this red across the pocket and put it over the pocket, and Sean will basically be dead. And if all goes well, he'll actually rest the white ball uh, on the other red that's just above it and leave no shot whatsoever. Oh, I, I wouldn't say no shot. There'd be a marker's double there, Jamie. Tell you what, he could play them. He could play the billiard shot, but no, that's no good. The cut is actually the only shot. Yeah, he has to play. He's got no choice. Can can he cut the yellow into the red? Do you push the red up towards the yellow? Yeah, that's another option, but it's not a shot that I reckon Sean would think of. And I don't actually understand that shot one bit. That is how you just cost yourself a match. <laughs> and. Yeah, that if was... I'm Nick here, I'm having a dip. I don't know if he will or not, but this is absolutely set perfectly. So what you're doing here is you're potting the ball in the middle. You play the three ball plant down the rail. The yellow will actually kick away from the pocket due to the angle that will contact the red. And then you just go game. Go game. The black obviously is a is the final concern because it may not go to either corner. So you want to, I would have liked to have been a bit straighter than that, but... What am I talking about? He's not even going to play. He's just going to double the red out and be a douche. <laughs> Come on, Nicky. 10 8 up. Have a dip. Might even try and cannon it out. And he does all the whole headbutt at the ball. And <laughs> but he's got the shot and he will now have a fair dinkum dip. I guess he always was going to. We just didn't pick the way he was going to play the shot. And I guess the way he has chosen was a safer way. So full credit to him. Now, this shot is key because this will be determining the angle that he has to get up the other end of the table for the needs, black. Needs an angle on this red. I just don't know whether that black passes to the right corner. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but we're going to know soon after he plays this. He's screwing around it. Yeah, I don't mind this shot, but oh, he's it's straight. too straight. And I'll tell you what, even using reverse side here off two, it's not going to happen on these cushions. <laughs> not sure if he can force or not. It might, it might sneak in inside that yellow at the top, I don't know. If it goes left, he's OK. I think he has got a bit of angle, he does. Just ducked down and had a good look. I'm not sure what that's Am about. I mean? It's like he's about to go for a swim, but decides he's not going to dive in the deep end. So a big shot here for Nick, and this will put him into the quarterfinals on the winner's side. Curtis said he'll hit the yellow very thin and it'll still go in. He's rolled it like a fairy and it has missed. I cannot hang it on him about that. I probably would have played it like a fairy myself. Yeah, I think we were all playing an in or over there. But Bart still needs to make the out. I actually hate playing outs when 
the blacks over the kick and there is a ball on the cushion. But I'll probably leave that ball on the cushion as my last ball and just get right behind it, just drop it in. Although actually that's a thin black then, so that's a stupid call. So perhaps... Uh, it's not ideal. That's not great. You might be able to screw up off the yellow near the black. You don't want to move the black though. Alright, just taking this ball. So now the roll in uh, yellow. He knows he's just got to, he doesn't have to do anything in all the white, he's got to drop it in and he's got the yellow over the kick, so just a good bit of nerve to be shown. He's played it with a touch of drag, I think. Yeah, and that was an excellent pot. Like Kurt Dunham would have. Kurt, Kurt Dunham would have punched that in his screwed back half the table. He would have put the other yellow on the same shot and just land fat on the black, he said. So, and I don't blame me. I, you know, I can see where he would think that. Good queuing again. That could have actually, if, he could have actually put the back by mistake there and killed it. So, very, very good composed out from Sean Bud. One, one we all obviously expected him to make, but still. 9 10. 9 10. I wonder how Nick's feeling. You guys were right. I already counted him out. I just said there was only one frame to go without thinking. What do we got here? Joel stuck on his last red. This has got to be the same frame, is it still? It's 1-0 to 1-0. Joel. Oh, Joel Bud smashes his cue on the ground. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe you should just like realise he's 10-9 up. I think uh, he's saying to himself, golden opportunity, I should be... Uh... He does wear his heart on his sleeve, the young Howie. Uh, and he actually has got an eight ball on his sleeve too. He's got a tattoo of an eight ball on him. I tell you what, open table. If I was him, I'd actually get tattoos of gold necklaces next. <laughs> open table, Jamie. will be the choice, but he hasn't, I don't think he's got the easiest of starters. He might be able to play red onto the yellow. I reckon it's not set. I, th I think he'll still get it because he's got to chop the uh, red thin. Oh, that's a pretty good shot. Oh, he's gone in off. Oh my god, he will kill well. if, he, if he smashed his kill off and just missed losing the last frame, what's he going to do? Where is he going to jump with it across the room or what? Oh, he's just going to give himself a nose massage. I'll tell you what, I'd love to be able to put the camera on the players right now, that'd be great. Now yeah, he's having a talk, he's shaking his head, he just needs to compose himself here, Nick. Especially if Sean makes this out, Sean knows the new favourite. Yeah, you've got a to... Momentum. You need to let go of that. Sean does the obvious thing and takes yellows. Probably wouldn't have liked to have come through a bit there though. He's not really landed ideally. Does have two visits. It's just, uh, I think he's just waiting for a shot to be played on the other table before he addresses his next yellow. Bello, uh in Patrick's words, he choked like a mutt or something similar to that. <laughs> And lost. He missed a uh, Mr. Black. Uh, lost 11 9. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the score was when he missed that black. I think he was 10 9. No, 9. No, yeah, I'm not sure now. So Bud is just sizing himself up to make this out. This is the right shot. Get rid of this, uh, this end of the table. And he just gives himself an angle where he probably might be able to drag this in. Probably would have liked to have come across a touch more, but it should be okay. Got to be careful. If he actually doesn't hold the white, he might smooth himself. Well, he's 
got through the gap, but still not on a string. He does still have two visits. Even though, even with two here, this is still actually a little bit tricky until you get the white ball in a very good position. Um, I don't know whether you just promote this this yellow to the corner and then just, like, you want to land on a pretty straight, so you can land on the bottom rail and then just obviously get out centre table for the black. But... Yeah, I think that's the shot you pump. If you don't actually hit this shot right, though, and give yourself angle. Yellow on. He actually had a really good look at this. He can play cushion first, I think, if it's not. I'll tell you what, if he plays his cushion first, he's got to make sure he just misses the red because this can go wrong if he hits this too off the back cushion too thick and he's okay. Good shot. Here he can play for the long black into the corner or try and come past the red and play the black in the middle. But Well, he's played a very... Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. It did pull up quickly and uh, that's the danger of the inconsistency of the table sometimes. But uh, it queuing? I think you'll still get this. Dude, I'll tell you what, I wonder how close he's off is. I don't think the white will reach. He's nailed it. And it goes. And 10 all. And he, there is a new favourite in town, and his name is Pink Shirt Sean Bud. Or is that Salmon? I'm not sure. But Salmon? And either rate, the momentum is now with Sean at 10 all when he was 10 7 down, I believe, or 10 8. Nick's still shaking his head. And Nick needs to quickly get on with it. Nick, well, what Nick needs to do right now is say, I need to go and take a wee wee and just go and splash some water on his face and compose himself. That's what he needs to do right now. He needs to do the Ben Noonan oh, yeah. special. And he will still cut break this, I can already tell from where he's put the white. Cuts, oh, he smashes the absolute bejesus. Why not just hit the front ball and have a dip? Um, landed on nothing. This game's funny like that when momentum changes. The, also, the luck can also go against you as well. It can be a very, very cruel, unforgiving game. But when you're actually flying, it doesn't matter what you do. You'll go for a cannon and it just does the Jake McCartney and just land perfect every time. He is elected yellows. Well, this must go to the middle. Oh, there was no problems at all then. He didn't Shrink run of the through. head not required. Didn't quite run through as far as he would have liked there. Well, he might play to get on the one on the side rail off this. I think so, Pikey. You play the outside, the very left of the, of the uh, yellows, come cross table and land on the side cushion for the, uh, no. for the yellow. I don't like this shot. I think this basically says, you know what, I, I can't win. So, what? He's covered the red nicely. He's got extremely lucky there, but yeah. he does have a ball in the middle. And that, yeah, that red, it's all by itself, will go to the middle, uh, left in the middle. So, Sean, Sean just needs a couple of good positional shots to get himself on a string, and then uh, that ball down the rail will be something he wants to eliminate early as possible. Oh, this is interesting. He's looking at playing up inside. Ball in the middle, he's going to land behind the red on the cushion and just play it up as a shot to nothing to the corner. And he's perfect. That's not bad. Everybody was worried that was going enough. I actually didn't think it was even going close. <laughs> First time I've judged something right today. Do you just roll this up? You don't play off the yellow? No, I pretty much just roll this up. I was just thinking off the yellow to open it up for the red. Uh, the red goes, Pikey. Yeah? Yep, the red goes past that yellow if you're talking about the one on the right there in the middle the, of the mall. The, yeah, the goes. one near the black. Hmm. 
Well, the one near the black, it doesn't go. It has played it off the red. That's a super shot, and now everything is available. Yeah. Still a lot of uh, transitional play to be made that isn't just a pot stun type scenario, so he needs to move the wide a little bit. Slightly on the wrong side here. Mm. Yeah, if he had actually got the white ball through another half a foot there, he would have not missed this out. He would have been almost guaranteed, but it's still a little bit awkward. He probably He's going away from where he wants to probably be. Probably needs to go up into Bork off this ball. And you spot on Pikey, and that is a very good shot. His angle looks pretty good to float down onto the next ball, but it's all about position on that last one. If he can get just, and I mean just off straight, he can... He can play the run through off the bottom cushion and land on the red into the middle. And two blokes have just been caught up being Clint Kaplan, James O'Reilly. They look at each other and try not to headbutt each other and <laughs> they grab their cues and walk off. Well, Sean's played for the awkward one first. Actually, I reckon that could be okay. I reckon he got a swing around off two. I think it was a good option to play for that ball first. I'm just a bit worried about this yellow at the bottom. You may have to, even if you use side, then you're going to count in the other yellow probably, so this is a tricky shot. Yeah. And plus the rails throw wide as well, so I think this actually may not come up very well. So he's just missed Oh, he's yellow. only just... He and did I'll, only I'll just get right, through there. Bud will not miss this long pot either. This is a black. This is a. This is a black off the spot for Bud. And snooker. He just. He just eats these. In a gut. And in unison, <laughs> about six people all around me have all gone Ooh, at the same time. <laughs> If Nick loses this match, he may he will be on suicide watch. And Sean Budd has done it. That is a super comeback from a 10-7 or 10-8 de deficit. And he and well, that was an interesting handshake. I think Sean's I think Nick's just a little bit devastated. Anyway, at the end of the day, he was probably a little bit outclassed by a uh, very good cueist in the uh, pressure stages of that match. Yeah, he'll be kicking himself. He had the chance. And uh, sorry to the people that want to watch this match, but we I really want to switch over to Rubber and Rusty. Dan's going to move the camera for us. <laughs> Right, so the feed will go off shortly, guys. There'll be a new link put on the Cube Ball TV page. You'll have to switch to it once this, uh, we get the Robbo and Rusty match underway. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back and uh, have a yak about that one. Joel playing the uh, kick shot off the rail here. And he hasn't got it. So Alex to go 2-1 up here by the looks of it.
Uh, as we all know, no one, and I mean no one, is exempt from getting shit hung on by me on Cubeville TV. Robbo, that includes you. We were going to switch the camera to watch your match, but you have explicitly requested that you do not want it filmed. You are weak! Weak, I say! I think it's just a little bit of controversy from earlier on. He just wants to focus on nothing but himself and the, and the match. But still, there's a lot of players out there would want to watch this match, I'm sure. And to me, it looks like he's extremely frustrated. Yeah, he's extremely frustrated with the table. At the end of the day, we've all got to play on it at some stage. He played a $1,000 match on it and beat James Della, one of the best players in the country. So he needs to just calm down. Anyway, I'm going to take my break. It's 3-0, uh, I think, to Rusty. <laughs>